you have the nickname Shulminator. Yeah. Where did that kind of stem from? because my whole content is going drifting in clutch shakers, OSW. There goes the engine. Take it apart, rebuild it. I was an idiot thinking, oh, I'm going to fix this car up and go drift it. And in reality, you got to spend 20 times out to even get it to the track. Here we go. Matt Schultz doing a good job trying to talk. The compression test of the K was 90 PSI across the board. No. And I'm not going to buy it anyway. The wall would have been like minimal damage, but then I hit the wall and then bam. So I said, bro, standing on the brakes. So that's an L judge's call. Right? 08Rs are extremely grippy, and they're very expensive, and they don't last long at all. Welcome back to the number one drift podcast on YouTube. I'm Dawson. I'm Nathan. And we'll get to the guest here in just a second. We got a special one for you. Um, but... Obviously, as you can tell, we are not in the same studio. Uh, we are in the lovely state of Florida, uh, where the big Florida scene is. But um, this is going to be a special episode for you guys. Uh, but I do want to make a couple announcements real quick. Uh, we do have merch. Uh, so if you have not seen that, go cop it now. Uh, help support the podcast, uh, especially with all these travel vlog uh, podcasts and everything, too. So um, do you want to... Say anything? Nope. Bring, All right. Bring them down. Well, let's go ahead and bring them in. Uh, we got Matt Shulman on the podcast today. So, how's it going? What's going doing on, dude? All right. How you doing? Chilling. Chilling. Hell yeah. Just hang on. See. Is it on? Yeah. No, you're good. I can hear you. You can. Can, can you hear? No. You can't. No. Like at all? No. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Um, I guess uh, so let's start off. Tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, just what you do for a living, what kind of cars you have, stuff like that. So I am Matt. I live in Orlando, Florida. Um, I'm a professional detailer full time. Um, and then I have my 1.5 Jay-Z comp car that I can beat in clutch shakers with. My main only like car, you know, that I have. So that's basically what I have. And then uh, I drift normally uh, OSW and clutch shakers and basically it right now but oh yeah it's, yeah it's a pretty sweet series okay um so i i, I did want to ask you have the the nickname shulminator yeah so uh where did that kind of stem from it's randomly one time in the shop at adams he just said it and it just like kind of stuck it stuck took uh, no what do I say? <laughs> it's kind of uh it kept going it kept going with it he said it once and everybody started calling me and it just kept going and then on the videos and then just kept going on with it, and then people started calling me that for a while. So, so just random. I have a lot of nicknames. Uh, I've heard him call you Shulmanator <laughs> in Clutch Kickers, though, over the intercom. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's everywhere. The Shulmanator. He, lo he loves doing it. He loves it doing definitely that. caught on real quick. Yeah, it's a good name. I like the name. Yeah. But, like, they, like Pat calls me Sherman. Shulmanator. <laughs> Just, Show just showman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have a lot of nicknames. Schumann, back in the BMX days, like that's what my original OG nickname is. But Shulmanator definitely took it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that was just the one. Yeah. All right. Well, how uh, how long have you been drifting so far? I've been drifting, driving for five years now. But I've been in the scene for like, God, a long time. Like, probably ten years in the drift like into drifting and having friends into it around it kind of thing but driving probably about five years that's good yeah hell yeah i've been in about how long have you been in it's well, only been a couple of years right three years yeah three years that's about the same as it's me. crazy how fast like you learn like oh, you know dude, what i mean like yeah, it's, it's insane. like 10 years but it's honestly like three <laughs> yeah i feel like drifting is like trial by fire though like the first time you go to the track you're super nervous you don't know what you need and then you make a bunch of mistakes and the next time you're like man yes. I, i'm not gonna fucking do that again yep. you know so you like learn what you need to have on you and stuff and you obviously you learn how to work on your car because you know your first event you're like oh, it'll be fine it's not gonna break whatever yeah, and then of course it fucking breaks everything the most you know? there tools is. and everything <laughs> yeah. with you and learning everything best, goes wrong the best part though like if you know if you aren't breaking things and learning then you're not doing it right Ain't that the fucking truth? You know what I mean? Like, not breaking. Like, people, I don't, I don't break my car. I want to break it. It costs money. It's like you don't break it, you ain't gonna progress at all. <laughs> or you know what I mean? Like, learning. I love learning good and bad. 
Speaking of that, I did uh, notice that you did get into BMX and stuff from the very beginning. Is that what kind of like stemmed you to get into cars? Yeah, pretty much. So like all every single one of my friends that is in the cars now already got out of cars and stuff. Like they're all into BMX. Like <laughs> not even exaggerating every one of them. Um, we did BMX for years. And then as we started getting our first cars and getting older into the teen years to like to want a car, you know, not a normal car, like, you know, cars. <laughs> and uh, my my friends, like again, like we were kids, couldn't afford cars. We didn't, we didn't, we're at that age. We weren't 16 yet to get our first car, kind of thing, yeah, yeah. or 18, whatever. And uh, my one BMX friend, John Walski, he bought a Subaru WRX, and like, it sounds dumb now, but like, you know, getting in that thing and you know the box or noise, the blow off valve, the turbo, <laughs> you know, all the stuff, you know, the external wastegate, like that was just like, oh my god, like. This is awesome. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, I want that. Like, I, I, had I, one. I have. Did you? Yeah, I yeah. had one. They're I had great an SCI. Cars, yeah, they, they break like everything else. But yeah, they're fucking junk. Yeah. I think, but you yeah. know, but it's like a still, cool. It's a cool starter. It was car. the introduction of you know <laughs> cars. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want any other car except that. My first car, like, I just want that. And a few years go by, and then all my other friends basically but me get the damn WRX or STI whatever and I'm sitting there like this is great fuck yeah I wanted, to be the, I, wanted, fuck, yeah, I wanted to be the first person at my high school to have a WRX and I was just about to get mine and of course this one kid damn gets one and I'm like, to it. I'm like okay it's whatever made friends because of that and then again that's like cars and people like you see a kid that has a WRX or a car you're automatically friends you know what yeah. I mean yeah. back into a friendship and then all my other friends already had the Subarus and Evos and stuff. And I finally, it was a whole big deal because I kept telling people I was, was going to get one. I love Evos. <laughs> Evos are cool. <laughs> yeah, now that so I understand cool. cars, they're better. But I've gotten to drive the WRX, it, the STIs, you know, and the Evos at Mannheim. <laughs> they're, 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 in dude, my opinion, so they're both better. equally junk. But and they both break a <laughs> lot. <laughs> like, I do every Evo guy I know because, like, I have kind of, gotcha, a, I have kind of a, <laughs> <laughs> I have kind of a background in like drag racing, like the street racing. That's how I kind of got into cars. Was I used to rollerblade, and then that's kind of the same thing. Right. So I got into drag you racing. Rollerbladed? Hold on. I was flowed by asphalt what beach, the dude. Fuck? Oh. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Because I, I had the fucking a, Aragon 3s, I baby. I was shit. I started off skateboarding, and then I moved to BMX because I absolutely sucked at skateboarding. I can't skateboard. I can't Dude, ride yeah, skateboard. Was, was like, is Rainer doing this episode? Uh, no. We got Cool Cats doing this episode. Okay, Cool Cats, you just Google my name and rollerblading on YouTube, and you can find all the embarrassing 16-year-old <laughs> footage you want, all right? But, yeah, so I had I had that, and then I, I like, I had all these different things that, uh... I like got into after rollerblading and then I got I met all these people in Murfreesboro that had Evos mm. and Subarus and they would yeah. they dude they would dominate when their cars yeah. would work but I used to make fun of them and call them 60 percenters because 60 percent <laughs> of the time their car didn't work yep. they're just broke man. yeah but Basically. I I finally got I finally got it like it was years of like oh I'm gonna get one I was always made fun of by them and other people of the Subaru thing and I finally got one the 2012 WRX. I was supposed to get an older That's one. That's pretty new, though. But I ended up getting a 2012 WRX yeah. for my first car, and it was great. I survived the Subaru curse, too. Never blew the motor. You know what's crazy? That's an accomplishment. This day, exactly. <laughs> this day, exactly. Two years ago, I sold that Subaru. Oh, no, no way. November 14th. That's today, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Sold that car two years ago today. It was sad, but I got my new... Six seven truck that tows my drift car now, so that's why I sold that to get that. But yeah, attaboy. Yeah. Better things. That, that was the thing. But like that's that's the car that got me in the cars. But also at the time when I had the Subaru, and throughout, like I've always been the one that likes smoke tires and the feel of sliding. Like I went to a grass field one day in the Subaru, all wheel drive and slid, and I was like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. I got that little bit of I was like, ah, why do I have all wheel drive? This is dumb. But like, I didn't want to sell it. My first car was attached to it. I liked it still, but like. I was just like, okay, you know, I, yeah. but I got it. I had that little bit of a sideways feel, and I was like, oh, man. And then um, I got my, all my friends were in the drift thing as well. Like, I had a few friends from Minjuku and Claremont, Florida. That's, they, you know, they have their shop there. But, like, I knew the, my friends worked there, and they had drift cars, and I was always around it, but never had one. But I've always had the itch to get it. So mm. I was around drifting for forever until I got my first S chassis and, you know, started driving. That was going to be my segue. So you said you only pretty much have the, the yeah. S chassis, right? Yeah. Okay. So our question was like, what cars do you have? But my, my version of that question would be, okay, so what, why S chassis and how, and what's the story on that car? I yeah, know you told us a little bit about the dog box, but like, how'd you come up on too. the, <laughs> um, so, I mean, I mean, 
no one can deny when they get in the drift thing or learn about drifting. It's the first thing you see is a 240. Yeah, oh, the car yeah. of how much you hate or love. Them. <clears throat> it's that's just what it is. Drifting. Especially I'm both. I fucking think they're junk, but I, I like I have sure. three. <laughs> yeah, sure, but like they are very. Pr- now that I'm like in the comp stage and years later, they're very proven. But rewinding, going back in the time, um, basically, like that's what I wanted, uh, and I I didn't want to ask. Well, before I okay, so my first two four you ever bought was. <laughs> God, so dumb. But it, now that I think about it, the price I got it for, even though it was a shell with the engine in it, is crazy. So, first of all, I ever bought, and we, I was a shell out here in, out in Sarasota, and it was a shell with an RB25 in it. Cheers I, to I, that. I don't know if it's a Series 1 or Series 2, whatever. I didn't, I didn't know about that back then. Doesn't matter. <laughs> or Neo. It, it might, might have been a Neo. I don't remember. But if it is, it's cool. Anyway. If it was a Neo and you got it for a good deal, well, that's yeah, a good It was a shell. I wish mine a was shell a shell with a ton of just stupid parts that were also good parts at the same time. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. dumb interior yeah. or exhaust. Oh, it's and, like a typical S chassis stuff. This is back in 2017, which is not that long ago, but like it is. It is, though. When the um, world was normal ish. Right. right. <laughs> and we, uh, there's, we a, went, there's an S chassis with like 2,700 miles on it for oh. sale on f- Marketplace, and it's $40,000. Dude, Brennan, uh, Brennan still owns the the 2,000 mile <laughs> fucking That's the 240 or whatever. About. Oh, it's that one? <laughs> 40 grand, Dude, bro. Yes. Jesus. They used it. <laughs> to, yeah. Yeah, it's insane. They used it for um, some type of. Uh, I think it was a movie or something, and it just never got touched afterwards. Is it, it red? ended up a shell. Nah, it's the green color. The green, oh, it's, it's missing a, a whole front clip. Like a whole front got clip it. is cut off of it. But uh, it's the shell only has barely over <laughs> no, a thousand miles on it. It's insane. It's got it's got all the body work there. It just needs paint. If I don't know if we're talking about the same car, maybe he's got two. Because the one I was talking about has got well, like twenty seven hundred miles on it. it. He may have put the front clip on it. I, I I don't know, but he he had one that was it was missing the entire front clip, but it was only a less than two thousand mile yeah, yeah. two forty. What doesn't matter, dude? Forty thousand yeah, dollars. Either one. Yeah. Either way. That's but crazy. Like, the I'm, market is crazy. I'm pretty sure I got this shell, <clears throat> rolling shell, not like a shell on stilts or whatever. Rolling shell, RB twenty six. 25, not 20, 25, with a trans, literally with, like, like, a, like an engine just put into a shell. Bunch of parts. I, I, I can't remember the price. I'm pretty sure it was, like, $1,800 to two grand. I think I paid for Damn. it. Damn. Which now is, like... <laughs> I paid 2500 for my I car, wish. and it was a runner with a, K, with a right. KA in it. I but paid like, 3500 just for the swap it, alone. Yeah, and this was me not for being... For a Series 2. Yeah, not being smart to, like, want to learn how to drive. I was an idiot thinking, oh, I'm going to fix this car up and go drift it. And in reality, you got to spend <laughs> yeah. 20 times out to even get it to the track to drive a good drift car. Just to break it. So my friends were like, like, dude, like, just don't do that. Just sell it and get a running car. So you can just learn how to drive. I'm like, okay, whatever. Made a ton of money on it. Sold it to this guy. He bought it. And uh, turns out later on, I found out that that shell was Alberto's first like S chassis drift car. Alberto. Big boost. Yeah, big boost. <laughs> hey. No way. S chassis like drift car. I found that out after I sold it, and it was hilarious because it was the one, which was wild. But like, he wanted it. He would have bought. It, he said if I knew if he knew I had it. But like, I kind of kept it secret. It was also kind of before I knew him. Yeah, it was way before I knew Alberto. I told him that after the kind of when I first met him. He's like, "Oh my God, that's my car!" <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> my car sat in the driveway forever. Didn't didn't do anything. Made money on it. Then I bought this stupid <laughs> uh, white hatch KA S13, and we compression tested the KA. It was 90 psi across the board. No. And I'm, I'm going to buy it anyway. I mean, I buy it like an idiot. But the interior, <laughs> the condition of the car was so mint. Even though the motor wasn't great, it was so mint back then. I bought it for. Nineteen hundred dollars. That car now, even low compression motor, probably go for. I don't even want to say the grand, price. Five, probably something grand. like that. Yeah. And uh, the, there's no alignment. All the bushings were shot. The, there was towed in, probably inch towing on the front. Drove that forty five minutes from Orlando to Claremont, and it was the tires were screeching. It was just the whole thing. Bought that. That was dumb. I cleaned that up. Sold that. Made money on that. Then I bought my first actual. Running good drift car with a black SR hatch, stock angle, no handbrake, just welded diff, exhaust, clean interior, SR, stock SR. And I, I went and started drifting and did my first like learner's day thing. And they're like, 
why you're here. You're already doing well. And I, I just kind of, I, kind of I, I'm a very visual learner. And I've watched like Adam and was on the track and all my friends driving for years going on ride along for like three, four years straight with no car, just watching yeah, me yeah. around it. I kind of just picked it up quick and then just. So that was your very it. first drift car. Yeah, like, for, you know, like, yeah, like running drift car that I learned in. The Tight. black SR Hell car. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was a, such a clean learned car. Learned on an SR. Yeah. That's wild. Like, Never had, well, had one issue, a bad injector one time, replaced the injector perfectly fine. It was great. But no handbrake, no angle. I just drove like, I couldn't afford a handbrake or an angle kit back then. I just, Dude, yeah, I just drove a, what I had and it was, it worked. I learned. And unfortunately, we were on a kind of a sketchy track and I had a, I was learning how to tandem and a sketchy driver in front of me spun out and kind of just like didn't do the homie spin out, get out of the way thing. He spun out and kind of sat there. Ooh. And then I had nowhere to go. My brakes locked up. I went into the wall and then. The wall would have been like minimal damage, but then I hit the wall, kind of hit the wall, and then bam, right into him, oh. and it just like totaled the car. And I was already, pl- I was already planning on buying this red Jay Z car hatch a few months down the road because I was getting money to get it, and the guy was holding it for me until I got it. He got enough money to get. It. I, don't, I don't know why, but he did. A nice guy, I think it's Freddie Freddie Jarp, down south in Florida. He held that held that car for me for like a while. So I was like, okay, I crashed the car, whatever. I'm going to get another one anyway. I'll fix this and drive it. Well, <laughs> I basically got the new car, which is my current drift car. But that was when it was my first bought a Jay-Z swap, whatever. But I bought that car for eight grand. That car now is probably, what well, would have been 20, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Like, it's crazy to think like, parts and cars get so expensive now with inflation and the COVID prices and all that stuff. But yeah, but then I, I ended up selling that car to my really good close friend, Jacob, who was in the car when I wrecked the car. <laughs> <laughs> he just got the two front done on it, and we're in the process of re, 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 re how do I say that? Yeah, rebuilding. Re, yeah, re, rebuilding that car. <laughs> <laughs> Brain fart. Rebuilding that car. Stupid. So can, so can, yeah, <laughs> yeah, stupid. So, so he can drive it and learn how to drive. So it's kind of cool. My first drift car that I learned in will be my another friend's first drift car that he will learn to drive in, which was cool. But then I went on from that car to my my current drift car. That the time was, I bought a, a red. It was red, spray painted, one Jay Z. Uh, hatch that is still the car I have now again um, but uh, it was a pretty it was a missile kind of thrown together but it worked it worked like never had an issue and then once um, I drove that for like I think two years and then uh, as a missile and just beat the crap out of it like crazy and then finally uh, Cost shakers back before they when they first announced they were doing the series. I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to I'm going to do it. Like I'm not going to just go here with the missile and just whatever. Basically tore the entire car down to where like a bare shell, um, all the wiring gone. Like the wiring before was so bad, like got all the junk out, had the whole car rewired, ECU master standalone, all new coils, suspension, everything, all the above. Painted the car, new kit, and went out. I literally went to my first uh, clutch stickers, brand new car, never tested it, and like. The first clutch stickers I think I did was round three of season one, and I did it, and I was just like hooked instantly. Because like, no matter how bad or good you are, going to a comp, grassroots, pro am, whatever, like, you're learning no matter what, and you're progressing no matter what. Oh yeah. Speaking on that, so. So I was going to do that, but yeah. yeah no, 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 you're good. You're good. <laughs> I, I just want to touch on that a little bit because uh, getting into the drifting and how you've um, explained how you got into, but who was your biggest like influence you would say to starting your drift career? I mean, there's so many people like I looked up to, like just normal friends. But then I, you know, I knew Adam for years through BMX, and like I learned a lot through Adam, and you know, working with him, and basically seeing his mistakes when he was learning, I kind of took account for that and saw the mistakes, mistakes. he made. Yeah, what were some? I mean, some of know, the bigger ones. What parts you should use? What setups you should do? Proper setups you should do? Like the pitfalls? Yeah, you know, just the dumb things that go a long way, kind of thing. And then the important things as we got way later into when he got into FD, like all, the whole timeline of learning, watching him being around professionals and all the small little stuff that you would really think about unless you're doing it, kind of thing. Just being around that, I got a big jump, you know, into it knowledge wise and skill wise, and that helped a lot. But there's a lot of drivers I looked up to. Like there's. I don't. I don't even have a favorite, really. I just. I appreciate all of them. If that makes sense. So like, I watched everything and just kind of took it account and just kind of put it into my own thing. Just a people watcher. But you know, James <laughs> Dean's amazing. I appreciate his driving because he's so damn good. Chelsea's great. Like, can drive with yeah. him now. He's a great. Like, everybody's so good. Like, like I look up. I look up to everybody basically. But you know, being around Adam definitely helps. You know, learning a lot and continuing on. With what all was that. the one thing that you kind of like? 
you, you learned the best from Adam, like that he taught you, whether it was just him doing something and you saw it and observed it or, or like he him did something specifically and you were like, telling Ooh. you. Basically, yeah, like yeah. He, he's a perfect perfectionist and I am to a certain well, extent. I think we can all tell that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am to a certain extent, not as, as harsh as a, as a perfectionist, uh, if, you mix, if that makes sense, <clears throat> but like... You're particular, not as particular yeah, as LZ, though. But like, yeah. if I know, if if I see a mistake that I'm doing, I want to fix it, and that's kind of what he would do too. As soon as he would like, someone tell him he's doing something wrong, or he he knows he did something wrong, or something's not right in the car, he immediately fixes it instead of guessing, or he finds a solution fast to learn how to progress. It's a problem faster. Solver. Yeah, problem b- simple problem solving. But like, that's one thing that like you also learn too from people like that. Like, they want to be the best. And so everybody wants to be the best, but like especially someone like Adam, like he he wants to be the best no matter what he does, and like to follow that, you definitely will learn quick, and that's kind of what happened with me, like just like skill wise, knowledge wise, just like common sense, mm-hmm. you know, problem solving, just all that kind of stuff. I've learned from him big time, which helps in every area of motorsports. So, what would you say your biggest accomplishment is, uh, comp driving? Like, what was your like? Oh shit, son! Uh. I don't want to say it, but uh, don't say it. We love controversy. Beating Chelsea Denofa was pretty <laughs> sick. <laughs> Regardless of the call, whatever it was, I would have been down to go one more time and go even harder. It was a whole thing. I didn't, I didn't mean to bring it up, but like, it, I mean, we talked about it after the comp, and it was just like, oh, cool, dude. Let's drift thing. It's what it is. But like, yeah. you know, I mean, I I was ready to go one more time, but when I won, I understood the call. I it was a whole thing. Like as a driver and as other drivers that drive, like. You know when it hits hard, and you know when it hits not hard, but like sometimes it's really hard to judge. But like in the car, hard hit, knocked me off the wheel, kind of was a whole thing. And like D cell zone, he hit me, but like same time, my lead up to that was really good, and my chase was good. His was, were, of course, amazing as well. Just that battle was just wild, and it was super fun. And it was like, it, it, like getting that far on, and, that, and then the rain, it got, it got rained out. And I, it was my first time like winning money through drifting. Yeah, first time winning money through drifting. I got. I played seventh because that's where it stopped before the weather came in, and I got a pretty good chunk of change, and that was a good, my probably my biggest accomplishment. Not just beating him, but just like getting yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you like know, the whole ride. Yeah, you know. So it's sick. funny that you were talking about that because we were talking about we were talking about this inside, but that spot where he hit you is yeah. the same spot that LZ hit uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah. And dude, I'm not even gonna lie. Okay, when I saw that. Cause I like, cause I I like LZ, so I watch all this stuff. And so when I saw that happening, I was like, I was like, dude, he's standing on the brakes. What the fuck, you know? Yeah. Like I was like, how how are you allowed to do that? But then, so I so listen, this is one of those things where Dawson makes fun of me for this because I'll just say it. I don't, you know, because of that, course. Otherwise, how else are you going to figure out what actually right, happened? Right. So I commented on a video that Clutch Kickers posted it. of it. Yep. Did you see my comment? Uh, I, I I did. I don't remember what it is, but I saw you guys comment on it. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. It was it wasn't from the circle of Clutch Kickers. Oh, was it? No, it was from my personal profile. Maybe you guys put something else. I don't know. So I said I was like, Probably. "Bro, standing on the brakes. That's a yes. that's a that's a L judges call, right?" And dude, clutch kicker goes and like they said it like I would respond from the circle of drift. It was like they were like, "Yeah, we talked about it in the drivers meeting. No, you did. can't you can't be on the brakes there." But I don't. But you don't see that, and that's part of the problem with drifting yeah. in the media is because yeah. like we don't understand how come the wreck is someone's okay, fault. Yeah, you know? I want to ask you this. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for clutch kickers, what do you think would be for as far as me? Media goes. Mm-hmm. What do you think would be a good thing for them to do to make it more viewer friendly? Because I, that's a that's a good example. As in what? As in showing like, the drivers meeting would be. I feel like well, I mean, that's a great way. Like laying out the rules because it would it would probably. Pertain, I'm in drifting and I didn't get it. You know. Yeah, it would probably pertain to the announcers explaining things better. If that makes sense, because FD doesn't film drivers meetings because like. It's just what it is. But you do, you do have a good point to where if you're not in the drifting or if you are into it or even if you really are and there's something you missed that's so particular in a driver's meeting, like... Oh, it's a huge point of contention. Yeah. Sure. So, like, that, I mean, even that, that'd be kind of cool to film that. But, like, you have to really be in it. Like, there's fans that go and just want to watch. And there's fans that go that just want to 
th- th- there's fans that go just want to watch, and there's fans that go that want to be really into it. Yeah, don't like, rah, rah, I want my you know, guy I want to win. Know, I, like with me, like even like it's like in a other motorsports. I, I want to, yeah, I want to know like yes, they want to know all the stats. They don't play and football, everything. like you know, big beer guy playing football. He don't play football. He just watches. <laughs> yeah, he's sports ball. Yeah. Right, same kind of guy that goes to the track and have a car, but wants to drive and wants to understand. That is a good point. They they could film that, but like you got to be kind of really into it to understand. But like even drifting alone to understand it, you got to like be explained of the process of it. But with media wise, like. I think Clutch Sugar does an extremely good job media wise for the sponsors, for us. Like, even the drivers meeting, like, hey, for your sponsors, we want to do this for you guys so you guys get better media. Michael Cassaberry, the owner of Clutch Sugar, mm-hmm. awesome guy, loves drifting. Um, and uh, they, they just do things super pro- pro- <laughs> <laughs> very professional and super organized. And I appreciate organization because if you don't got or- organization, like, it, your event's going to be shit. Like, oh, it's dude, it's yeah. just what it is. But, like, even at the first, I mean, it has their flaws still. No one's perfect, but like their events are so good. I love doing it. It's very affordable, even though like fuel, tires, like affordable as in doing it, not like just like the tire cost or fuel cost. Yeah, I'm yeah, in yeah. Florida. It's very affordable for me to do it. If it was in California, I would not be doing it, obviously. But it does draw a lot of attention because, like, like it or not, it is one of or the closest tier to four wheeler drift affordably. Okay, well, yeah. So break down. All right, since it is kind of like the main competitor for Formula Drift, yeah. break down what Clutch Kicker is for the most part, to especially some so viewers that Clutch probably don't Kickers even know. Is the hundred thousand dollar drift series? They started up in Holt, Florida, at their original track. It was a very like it was a very very fun track. Very fun track. But it was equalizer. Yeah. So like for example, an FD Jersey is an equalizer track to where it's a very small track to where a slower car or a faster car can win like Rome sharpening TA his car is pretty fast but it's not a Matt Field fast or yeah, RTR it fast the spectrum and he got second place you know there yeah but about the clutch sugars at their track like they are I'm not talking Mike whoops <laughs> they are uh, <laughs> that track was the equalizer and it like got everybody's attention but other than the driving the payout was like hmm because every time we saw a payout um in drift comps over the years it was pretty minimal and they yeah. never paid I know people to this day still from comps 10 whatever years ago that are still not paid. That's, that's insane. What, that's dude. what everybody's scare was. Was like, okay, 100 grand. Yeah, dude, that's ten thousand dollars for first place every single round. It's like, hmm. But it was like, okay, we gotta go try it, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So did they just start as doing it just to help the drift community, or was it just so his to son, make a little extra uh, cash? Nick Castleberry was driving <clears throat> in his. Uh, S13 LS car, very good driver. He got good really quick. Um, and then um, Zach, who is the like the main guy of Clutch, he's the director of Clutch because I'm pretty sure. Like I don't know his exact title, but he yeah. They both were drivers, and then they wanted to start a comp to uh, the bug in the mic. <laughs> they wanted to start a comp to you know just do it, and they did it, and it grew quick because like like again like. It's well, all the payout about, is gnarly. The payout's yeah, gnarly, dude. but we're all... That's what we were just talking about. Like, I went to, I think, one or two rounds before I was like, okay, I'm going to do this kind of thing. So I wanted to see if they actually paid. And they pay they pay you in about a week, you know. It's a week yeah. turnaround? Yeah, about, a, about that, yeah. No way, so, dude. That's insane for an event. And the, everybody was like, okay. Normally it's like a month It was two. basically like, okay, if we do three events and we get paid a week or a few weeks after consecutively, yeah, whoever yeah. places, then it's legit. You do it one time. There could be still, you know, maybe, I mean, even, even three Especially times, but like, beginning, they're trying to figure it out. times to where you get paid from a drift comp that you, that you earned, it's legit. Like, I mean, anything could happen, but like, that was like, okay, this is actually it, and it's freaking competitive. So it's more or less the consistency that they bring that yeah, I think gives so. them the light versus other They comps are the stuff. only, in my opinion, they are, not the only, but they are one of the only dead hook Reliable, yeah. oh dude, yeah, thing. and and they're yeah. even their live streams ten dollars. Who cares? It's ten bucks. It's, it's ten it. fucking dollars. If you yeah. can't afford ten dollars, then come on now. Anyway, but the thing is, when the whole when that track the old track closed down, they're like, oh my god, you know. Then they moved to Freedom Factory. I was stoked, not because it was closer, because the reach you get from being at somewhat the Freedom Factory with Cletus is much better media and marketing Agreed. for them and every single driver there. I said that same thing, and it's a super perfect beautiful venue regardless of the concrete patch change and stuff like that but like I think it's great I think it's fun I don't think it will die out I think it'll continue on for a long time and if there was an issue to where the payout had to come down 
then that's probably what they would do. But I, again, I don't think it's ever going to die. My out. personal opinion is the, and this is, I feel like sometimes this is why the podcast works is because we're very different is I don't think yeah. it's going to die out. I think that the, the whole, it's going to die out thing started by when they moved from the clutch kickers, uh, Emerald coast mm-hmm. to the freedom factory. Obviously your car needed to be much more competitive. Sure. At that. So I think that all uh, yeah, the, I, so I, I that. think that all the broke boys started complaining saying, Oh, it's going to turn into tiny. <laughs> that's, 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 that's not my perspective though. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what people want to want. I know not sure. you. I'm just saying, I think but, that's what happened. Yeah, I think all oh, those people yeah, started I mean, saying stuff. To the public, like yeah. even when the, la- the, when I first got in the cluster, it was like I said, like, I was okay. I got to bring it to the table. Like, if I'm going to go there with my SAFC stock 1J, that probably would never have broke if I didn't touch it. But it was still, like, it wasn't legit. <laughs> it wasn't legit. It's it wasn't, story of our lives. You know, it was a missile. Like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to have to look nice. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I want to look nice. I want to do my thing. I want to do it well. But, like, I went out there, and even if you suck, if you're good, if you're in the middle, if you're pro, if you drive with better drivers, it's going to make you better. No matter how much, what kind of car. If you're in a Z and you got to follow Alec Honnadale, just go from 20 feet back in floor. You'll be fine. <laughs> like, it sounds crazy. I mean, you're not but, like, wrong. If you're just aggressive. I would and love d- to follow Alec Honnadale. Dude, that, be like, that, <laughs> would, be like, that you, would be my biggest accomplishment. When you, when you follow faster cars, take an account for it. If you understand. Like, if you're learning, you, mean, you might have an issue, obviously. It's, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't compare the cars. But, like, of my knowledge of learning, like, if, like when I follow Jonathan Neeran, I'm... 15 feet back riding the clutch holding the e-brake i jump and i'm on his i'm on his i'm right there yeah. it's, it's just you know but anyway back to the whole like i forgot where we were <laughs> i forgot where we were we, we, we were just, somewhere with oh the track comparing the tracks thing yeah like yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. that track was so far like from anywhere it was a, right off of, uh, yeah. of 10 i 10 i think you know going up on the panhandle far as hell from central florida but like alabama texas it wasn't that bad so it did bring more drivers from those areas but there was, it was not much crowd. Yeah. So I'm sure the Freedom Factory is way more versatile too. You can, exactly. you can swap that place up any which and way pe- you want. People oh, will yeah. go there just because it's, it's Cletus' track. Yeah. That, yeah. That's just he what said it is. Cletus's like me, first personally. name. Like, I we did. Talk you, about guys, this. you guys, uh, you guys hang out. You got his phone. Uh, right? I, 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 no, I'm, I know him. He's, he's, he's the coolest guy. But like, <laughs> it, 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 he needs to come on the podcast. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you guys do a lot for drifting because like. When you guys like talking does a lot. You like you realize a lot of stuff talking about what you love and other people as well. And you get so many different viewpoints to be like, oh, well, yeah, okay. So that's the that's, the, you know that's I mean? the way we see like, it is because, like I said in that a uh, couple of podcasts ago, it's like you're just having the same conversation that right. you would have in the garage yep. with your buddies and you're getting multiple point of views on your car versus like what you should do in uh, competition driving yep. or what you should do with your car specifically yeah you know? so it it just dude, people it get mad it's man great. yeah they but get like, mad yeah, oh yeah but, i love it so yeah I, we do it on purpose yeah, yeah it but purpose. Like it's, it's all fun at the end of the day if you're that serious like come on then, then don't drift or don't care just go away yeah <laughs> yeah go, go drag i don't know no but like even like about the Cletus and like his track like they did such a good job remodeling that track and like their team is so legit i was addicted to those videos oh dude i remodeling the freaking track. loved addicted. watching those construction videos i was on it i loved it i <laughs> love stuff don't know like why, that i don't know <laughs> either, but I love, i've always loved construction stuff especially at a racetrack <laughs> bro <laughs> but you're, all right you're an anime dork i don't want to yeah, hear it yeah, yeah, yeah we're good <laughs> i'm not making fun of you i'm just like dude i like watch cletus because he's got a 3500 horsepower el camino oh, you guys yeah, are yeah. like dude i like when he did grass <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love this side but like, but seeing like that, like I wasn't drifting when that track was alive for like 2012 drifting. That, that was the old DeSoto track. A lot of drivers were like, oh my god, he's remodeling the track, and it was a big deal. That's like OSW closing down for 10 years and getting bought out by YouTuber and then fixing it for me. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Um, but I appreciate his his team and Clutch Sugar's team combined is golden. Like, like safety wise, team wise, they are on their shit so fast. Say like as soon as the car's on fire, they have. Freaking ambulance and their and their guys on their uh what's it called? Oh, yeah, you've seen it, dude. It's that damn thing. Off road go kart thing in three seconds. But like Cletus was a, a law student, so I'm sure he's like, oh, he's, they got rules, the, which is good. Well, I'm saying I'm sure he's got a really good grasp yeah, he on all the shit he's really supposed to be on top right. of. That, like, I, I, he's like the somebody, guy for it. So if somebody like us did it, we were like. <laughs> Like, do we need this? And like, he would be like, ask me, and I'd be like, oh, man. And I, I, I appreciate <laughs> you know? again, like them, because like it makes you feel safe as a, dri- as a driver driving there and stuff like that, and having confidence in the you know the safety team and stuff like that. That's, that's a big deal. Like, and the fire happens, like when it happened to me at at, at Holt, that they they all the uh, the volunteers they had, they were they're veterans, 
you know, you can put a fire out, but you don't know how to properly put a fire out. But they had, <laughs> there were six guys there. Don't matter. They were still on their shit trying to get that fire out. Yeah. And they got it out quick, and we got it out quick, and I appreciated that. But, like, just having people on their stuff for safety and drifting is very important. They do an awesome, oh, yeah. awesome job there. I'm rambling. What's the, what's what the, I do. What's the biggest sponsor you've had so far? Or the well, what's the... Which sponsor has had the most impact on either your driving or the car? Oh, that's a hard one to say. I got to think. Good. That means we're doing our job right. Yeah. <laughs> How do I? Okay. I mean, the most advanced, the, the thing that really advances the car is the technology. I mean, it's all technology, but like, I'd say BC Racing, Coilovers, and ECU Master for sure. Um, because, you know, the computer of the car, the brain of the car is extremely important. You can do a lot of things with that. Mm. And suspension and setup on the car is extremely important, too. And those two things you got to have for good support. And uh, learning car setup over the years, like, you want the best of the best. And, like, you know, you, you get... Yeah, if you have a good sponsor, you get what you asked for, and they've given me what I've needed over the years yeah, and yeah. helped me progress big time. So, And Kansai Wheels. Kansai Wheels gives me a lot of support and wherever, wherever okay, I need so, so. Yeah, I want to I wanna touch on that because I see a lot of video. I've, I study YouTube, yeah. like, religiously, <laughs> and nobody really specifies on the proper ways to gain sponsorships yeah. and stuff like that. So what are, what are some tactical ways that you've learned to get big sponsorships that you needed so basically you got to have three things you got to show them you got to show them the roi and you got to show them your skill and show them what you what your goal is for anyone that doesn't know roi like, that's return on investment sorry yeah it's sorry. like <laughs> basically they're investing in you you're asking for their investment in yourself and you just got to show them and and prove to them what you can do and what how you can help them progress their product or help them look better or something like that so and in that way you would be basically explaining like what like what, how what following you have yeah, following what people you, have, you can reach what you can do what you want how to many do, events you go to stuff like that sure yeah what your goals are like you know a lot of people have a proposal like a powerpoint sponsorship proposal that you would send the sponsors in an email i have and a badass one yeah, yeah this is like saved as a document and like, <laughs> the, the thing is like it's uh, sponsors love effort as well mm -hmm. to have that effort to even if you paid someone to make you something or you made it yourself it's still effort to show them what you are so now it's like hey you send a blank email hey i would love to work with you whatever they're, Dude, they're, they're yeah, gonna respond to you that's a big thing like, with those. our editors that's a big thing that i've noticed is I, we've had a ton of people reach out for editor like sure. editing the podcast yeah. and the ones that have really caught my eye are like here let me do this for you real quick and then just just decide for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Let me know those what you think the, about those this. are the ways to do it. Yeah. Like if you offer something for free in the in the beginning to like prove that you're worthy, even there's some sponsors who are like, hey, or like they'll offer you half, and then if we see our investment is good, the next thing you need will be free. Hundred percent, do it. Or if it's twenty five percent, it depends on the product though. But like if it's something where you know you can give them a good a uh, a good investment that brings. You know, traction back to them or shows their product off better. You kind of, I've I've gambled with sponsors before and I've gotten what I what I would want to get out of them. Yeah, yeah. and like so because I knew it would progress me because I'd be like, okay, if I do this, it's gonna help you. Like, what were the some of those sponsors? So for you? Action Clutch, um, got I've heard that them. one a lot. Yeah, and like you know, people think like you know they're not as known as like ACT or other big company brands stuff like that. But like you don't know until you try. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, back when I did my uh, my dog box swap, like. Everybody that gets a dog box gets that damn tilting clutch or ACT or anything like that, and they all break. Like I've I watched Connor O'Sullivan's I forget what clutch it was I think it was ACT or something like that explode and destroy his engine block, the transmission, Jeez. everything. I've seen if I could, Eric Conkling's uh, clutch uh, seized. It's all <laughs> tilting, and I was like, first off, they're three thousand dollar clutches, yeah. which is oh insane. God. And you also have to have the correct spacing with the SFI bell housing, with the with the um, shims for the throw out bearing and stuff like that. But if you do like a J2 bell housing, like I have in my car, I should have that SFI, but like I was too cheap. Anyway, you, you can just throw that thing on <laughs> there and go. You know what I mean? You just go. You just throw it on there and go. But like I was, I was like, okay, hey, well, let's develop a clutch that can be on Google when someone's doing a dog box swap to be like, this will work for your GM 26 spline or whatever spline you get for your dog box or T56. So like on Jay Z, you can do dog box or T fifty six and stuff like that, and it's like the same pattern. So we basically developed a eight and a half inch twin disc action clutch, which is their Jay Z clutch, mm -hmm. 
with the GM26 spline for the input shaft for like a GM style dog box yeah, yeah, transmission. Yeah, yeah. And it's much more affordable than all the others. And I was the first one that had it. And it, it, it's not hard to do. You just change the center piece of the clutch. They, they custom make all their clutches in house. So, like, they just put a GM26 spline. Uh, center ring. Center ring instead of a whatever RM54, the big chunky ones on RM54s. Just change that. I absolutely hated the way that the Jay-Z. I worked on a Jay-Z car and, like, the way you have to. Oh, the fork! Oh, it's yeah, terrible. Yeah. Oh, it's God awful. awful. It's terrible. <laughs> but again, even serviceability with dog boxes, you have the four bolts that come off the bell housing and transfers out, and everything else stays in there. Yeah. And like the clutch, I I, I threw the clutch on. Does I it had, use it? Does it use a uh, internal slave like yeah. a T fifty six? It's the tilt and no, it's not the round one. So on the dog box one, it's like the four, the four kind of spider looking thing, tilting uh, throw up bearing. It kind of mounts through the adapter and it goes to the clutch. It's kind of weird. It's really, really, really simple, though. Okay, yeah. But, like, when you do dog box, so if you do a dog box, if you do a dog box swap, <laughs> God, I cannot talk. Um, you have, you kind of got to know what you're doing. Unless you call Rick tomorrow, yes, but like, yo, give me everything, yeah. and you got money. Yeah, but if you want to yeah. do it on a budget or figure out yourself, now you can go on Google and see an affordable twin disc clutch. And then I showed that to them, and then they're like, oh. But this worked out great. We have two people on this clutch now, and then Rich Whiteman that thinks on it, the chaser and FD. Yeah, pretty sure he's on that clutch now. They one other person, and we've had zero issues. And uh, you know, it's stuff like that, like showing what them an idea you have, or is it the progressing their product or testing it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's simple. It's, it's an example. It's a long example. Sorry, but like it's just like <laughs> one of the so, things that well, I've done. Well, so okay, so a lot of people know that I'm building a rally car. Okay. And it's a S13 hatch. Oh, um, what? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sick. <laughs> well, yeah. It depends on who you ask. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's an old race car. No, I'm with you. Yeah, it's a pro- X Pro Am car. It's beat all the crap. But right. it is stitch welded and it is, it, it's, it's, it is caged. And so I'm going to put a five cylinder Colorado engine in it. Sick. AR5 thing? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe. Oh. So <laughs> the, re- the reason why I was going to do an AR5 is because that would be cheap, it's right? Very cheap. And I'm not really shooting for a shit ton of power, but my buddy does Saginaws. You know what Saginaw is? Nope. It's like an old school, it's like pre Muncie yeah, okay. four speed. Yes. Okay. And so I was going to do that in a 350Z differential, maybe, or do the AR5. But hearing you talk about clutches, I was like, dude, fucking sag- a, a four speed five cylinder rally car would be pretty rowdy sound oh, fucking yeah. insane That'd be cool man for sure so maybe uh, maybe i'll Go send them the something like that wheel speed calculator thing on the gear on the Tremec thing on, on google oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you so with the AR, so with the air five fifth gear pinned it would do like 127 miles an hour <laughs> with the with the rear end i was going to use in fifth yeah in fifth if it breaks you go drink i get another one yeah that that yeah. was the idea it uses a pathfinder front end R two hundred yes. spool. I had that. Really? I yeah, had I that, that in my. I had a, I had a four six Pathfinder ring and pinion in my rear diff. I ran from my CD09 before I had the dog box. Yeah, so that was. I've seen a lot of people use the Xterra diffs. Maybe that's what I was talking no, about. The, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it's it is. Same, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's so what that's I, what I was gonna do, but yeah. it would only do like one hundred and twenty seven miles an hour. Yeah. But it's a rally car, so that's about as fast as you want to go. So I'm using uh, Ford Raptor shocks. Sick. <laughs> but we're gonna drill out the top of the uh, hoop, and I'm gonna have my metal guy close it up, and then you have a, a hoop that comes off of the shock tower, so I have 16 inches of travel. Oh my <laughs> lord! Oh, dude, it's gonna be sick. Gonna be so Cause, dude, it's gonna be so. It's gonna be so ghetto because it's me because I'm ghetto, you know. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like, dude, the first launch video that I'll do for it on Instagram, I'll like jump it off a loading dock or something, and yeah. people will be like, "What the fuck is he doing with right. an S13?" <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the fuck that's 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 <laughs> that's just viral stuff that's cool. You know? Yeah, I just think it'll yeah, be uh, well, being it's, different. Yeah, I don't really do it to be viral. I just think it'll be cool because I've always wanted to have a five cylinder car and I've always wanted to have a long travel car. Right. And this is a way to knock out both of them in one so I can just go on to the next thing. So maybe I can build the Civic or something. You know? oh, God. Yeah, he's he's like a, more or less the, the weird idea guy and I'm the one that makes it happen. Viral. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> makes people see it. Right. But it'll damn, be cool though. Lots of ghetto welding. But now, if I could, dude, if I could get a, do a dog box, oh yeah, just get a side shift. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's what it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Side yeah. shift. So I is was it like, straight cut gears, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and do it, dude. Yeah, it'll sound work. sound It'll cool. Rad. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that. But then, what if I can't street Pressure it? Pressure him in the comments yeah, to I'm do it. 
it it depends on the stuff you do. It's like it depends on what you want. Cause like you can get a cheap trans and it'll work, and then you break it four times, and then you or spend the same amount of money. And, and yeah, to, you know right. what I mean. Yeah. But if you're doing it on the street, I mean, when you go to the fourth gear on a, on a VSR, it's one to one, then fourth. So it's kind of it's much more quiet than all the rest of the gears. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on a stock diff, like in my car, I have a stock diff in my car somehow. Me too. Yeah. And uh, well, you're strong. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like you know, R two hundred is my it's that's why I didn't even bring it up. My lucky <laughs> anyway, but like when you go to the fourth, it's it's much more quiet than that. But they don't like to be well the NASCAR trains they can go forever. But like they have pumps that pump more fluid through it for NASCAR. But they they do get hot for sure. And there's some very small. It takes one quart of gear oil for a dog box. Really? One. Ooh, that's Jeez. small. I didn't think about that. That's crazy. When he told me that, I was like, "You're lying." Sounds safe. And I put the fluid <laughs> in. It came out. I said, "Wow." <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's cheap though. It's fifteen bucks to change it instead of a hundred or CD09, hundred something. You know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, well, what's what's kind of been the biggest? Um, I say struggle you've oh, had. Here we go. And drifting so far. Stupid <laughs> engines, man. <laughs> Injectors. That too. These goddamn JCs. No, uh, people. <sighs> there's so many different platforms you can do, and in my opinion, I was thinking about this all night. I knew it was going to come up. How do, how do I answer this properly to please everyone and aggravate people at the same time? Well, I know you're, you're an LS guy. You're yeah. gonna fit in perfect. Uh, I know you're an LS guy, but like I appreciate everything. But like I think your car represents your personality, and like I love, I've always loved the Jay Zs, and like they're not bad engines. LSs are not bad engines. SRs they're overplayed. suck, but they're cool. You know what I mean? Like it's they're, just like, but they're only overplayed <laughs> because because they're, they're really proven. good. They're proven. They're exactly. cheap yeah. and they work. It's so like an S thirteen. There's they exactly. made a fucking million there's, of them and they so work. Much, right. Yeah, yeah. Da- data or data, how you say it? There's so much. There's so much knowledge and in, in, in that area. But like with me, like my first Jay Z lasted forever on a stock ECU, that's AFC stock everything, just on a big turbo. That's it, and it. I destroyed that thing, never broke. Then did you know all the big boy stuff after same engine throughout the block? It was the old block, it was the old engine. It, it, it deserved it. It, was, it went out really cool too. And the fireball, you know, whatever. Did a fully built engine. You made a show. It's great. Somehow, freaking lost that motor big time. It was like I melted pistons, cracked two main caps, and spun a bearing at once. <laughs> Holy fuck! <Jesus. laughs> brand new engine, fuck? brand new fully built engine, eighth lap out, and. It, <laughs> Great, whatever. So I was like, okay, whatever. I buy a damn stock bottom end, perfect mint stock bottom end one J. Beautiful, like bearings would look brand new. It was definitely old, but like you know, they're, they're just good engines. Yeah, yeah. Throw that in there. Did great for a few events again, and then it overheats and melts the pistons in a perfect one J block, and I'm like. All right. Dude, fuck. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Why is this happening to me? No one else has these issues. What the hell? So then after that, after the one J happened, I brother was like, dude, let's just do a two J. But again, it's not the engine. Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not the motor. It's the thing supporting it. Like when you have a bad harness or a bad something that's making your engine work, and it's not working right, it's gonna hurt it. I could put any engine. I could put the FD Pro Spec whatever Jay Z in my car. I guarantee it'll break five events in yeah, because yeah. of the issues I've been having. So then I, I went through that 1J, put a, a GE 2J block of GTE internals in with fresh bearings, uh, 1.5 JZ, number of I had, and went out, it was fine. And then round one of the clutch triggers this year, got hot as fuck, melted pistons. And I'm like, what the fuck? Well, we found out my back line came off my regulator from intake manifold, lost fuel pressure, and then I later found out that the fuel pump ground was terrible too, so it was going in and out, in and out, in and out. <laughs> lost that motor. Oh, you good, you good. Uh, no, no, if you want to okay, go, yeah. go for it. And I lost that motor, and I'm like, okay, I'm done. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this, is, this is not, this is stupid. This doesn't, ha- this doesn't happen. I mean, it does happen, because like, so cars have cursed and have issues, but like, Parallel in your car. Do this. Do that. And it's like I'm not. It would cost me more to do a whole new swap. Yeah. Plus, I love Jay Z's. I don't care if I break them eight so thousand times. A lot of I people don't, don't want to do it. He, the way he cuts the reels up makes me look like I'm some sort of a V8. <laughs> yeah, I guess you do. A one Jay Z is the best sounding engine in it the world. Is. Last it is night, my for some reason favorite swap. I was going through my old videos and I heard my one J and I was like. Oh my god! It's just so much better. Oh, they sound so it cool. Sounds so sick. And I also had cams at the time. And when I pulled apart the 1.5, no, when I pulled apart the last stock 1J bottom end, I did that. I hurt. 
the cam lid was just done. The cams were done. The head was done. I got a new head. Yeah. Put stock cams back in it. And it was loud. All this thing sounds like a fucking hybrid. I hate this. Well, you know, yeah. from Pop Dockish, you can buy... This is... See, this is how you know I really like Jay-Z. Thing? You can buy a <laughs> brand new ASCAST head oh, yeah. from Papa Dockish now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can get them any... Real Street has them in stock. Or Real Street. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's what I meant. Yeah. Speaking on the Jay-Zs, though, the, the 1.5, how mm -hmm. a lot of people do that conversion with the 2J and the 1J mm -hmm. and the same. Uh, I know. I see Brandon... Wicknick. Wittig, Wicknick. Wicknick. Yeah. He's a, he, he knows them all. Okay. He knows all. Dude, he's a, he, yeah, he's, yeah. He's fucking glorified yeah. with that shit. But what? All right, explain what the point of that is. So pairing them two together. When you okay, so for example, if you go buy now, especially mm -hmm. a two JZ GTE long block from a JDM importer, it's going to be eight to ten thousand dollars, which is extremely expensive. But those are the best engines. Stupid. <laughs> they don't break. They're great. They last a long time. And they're proven to that. that. That's what it is. When you're drifting, it's a whole different kind of abuse compared to a streetcar mm -hmm. or a mid kind of drag Supra, whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? But you don't want to take that apart if it's good. Right. Yeah, Dude, yeah. People do. People do. It's, but yeah. now you can get a GE out of IS, GS, whatever. The block mm -hmm. crank, exactly the same, except um, no oil squirters in the GEs, which is kind of uh -oh. better for good things. So you have better oil, higher oil pressure. And you have you can run stock pistons and be fine with it. And if you have aftermarket pistons, they can take more heat. You don't need the oil squirters to, cut, to cool the pistons down. It's basically a budget <laughs> way of doing a Jay Z. Did you see that? Okay. Dark, did you see that darts dropping? Dude, up? I was about to bring that up in a second. <laughs> that was my last thing after I explained all my engine things. We'll get to that. Hey, I'll, I'll remember to get to that. Shulman <laughs> okay. thinks fucking Dawson's gonna bring it up, and it's like me. I know all oh, about no, all I was, the fucking hot rod Jay Z shit. But uh, free weight. Uh, you want us to wait? Oh wait. No, 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 I'll keep going. Um, it's fine. That way I'll know oh, more about it than him. Brandon's been doing Jay-Z stuff for years. But, like, if you guys, you know, there's so many different variations of Jay-Zs now with the, the GE VVTIs. Every 2J is exactly the same. There's some ports for, for different oil, like oil feeds and VVTI feed and stuff like that. Um, and the the blocks and crank, exactly the same. Same thing. Just, again, the GTE blocks have the oil feed for the turbos. Stock turbos or turbo, whatever. GEs don't. Um, but the crank and everything is the same. They just don't have oil squirters, which cools the pistons down for GTE. But NA, you don't need that. They don't get they don't get as hot. How much uh, how much oil pressure do you bleed off using the you squirters? Gain, I gain a lot. I mean, you. I don't know exact number, but it's substantial. But like, it doesn't really matter. But like, my oil pressure, my GE block with my built in like fully built two J with the GE block, like full throttle mount at one one forty. Damn. Yeah, it's very high. So, but like, if you're on a budget. Like what I did after the stock 1J went, I got a GE, pulled it apart, we holding the cylinders, um, put GTE rods, GTE pistons in it, new bearings, new rings, all the, you know, all that. Threw it in there. It would have been fine then had that stupid issue with the fuel, yeah, thing. Like the fuel thing. But he, people do it all the time. They make plenty of power on that. Every, everybody is doing the GE thing now because it's the cheapest way to do it. But if you have an IS, the GE head, the GE... My sister drives an IS. Yeah, the GE heads are... They flow better than GTE heads. They, they, they found that out. So you build a, GT, a GE head with a GE block with a built bottom end. You got a better it's, Jay Z. Yeah, it's yeah, just better. not the OG GTE Jay Z kind of thing. Yeah. But like if you're on a budget, you can do a Jay Z for really cheap. Like you can do stock pistons and rods for six hundred bucks for all six. The block if you find a bare pistons block, and rods yeah. for six hundred. Yeah, That's all day long. Shit. Dude, really? You go eBay right now. I guarantee you'll see like ten ads. People selling that or on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. You can, and they're used, whatever. But like, you can still. I'm for, listen, I'm for that. I just thought you were saying new because. You can get them new too. For $600? No, really? a little bit more for pistons. But like, they have brand new pistons, brand new rods you can get from Toyota still. Well, so a lot of people. What's the ideal piston to go with? It depends on your compression Hyper turbo and setup you want to do. But like, I, I, do, well, yeah. I do CP stock compression on mine. You can do nine and a half, ten and a half, all that kind of stuff. You can do. They have diamond pistons. They have a whole bunch of stuff. But like I've learned, depending on your setup, keeping it simpler is definitely the better way to go. Unless you're doing like a crazy pro car almost, or drag, yeah, like, yeah. drag it's car It's almost thing. always the way to go. Yeah. The more you get <laughs> yeah. in there and you chase the rabbit, bro, like, the, the more, more OEM you yeah. keep it, the more engine, reliable. Oh, I haven't got to that engine yet. Jesus. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 After the round one catastrophe <laughs> happened, I said, "Okay, lost fuel pressure. That line was old and brittle. I lost, I lost. I melted the engine down again, or whatever. I'm doing an an vac line for the regulators and the intake manifold. I'm doing a fucking full on surge tank from radium. Shout radium. 
Got a uh, two D Shorts 400 pumps. And we're having fuel pressure. And a fuel pressure sensor with a fail safe. If you lose it, it'll pull timing and shut me down, kind of thing. People don't run fail safes, but like, I don't care. At this point, I'm like, I'm running it. I'd rather hit a wall at this point. <laughs> like, it sounds crazy, but like. Just my, run two base maps, and then if, you, if you, you're if you in the position where it's yeah. like you got to risk it for the biscuit, then yeah. you just put in the base map number two. Yeah, so mine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you can, yeah, that's exactly what I have. But mine doesn't I, like cut me off. Is. Mine pulls timing slowly so I don't die. Kind of thing. If I'm the bank, I'll be able to get, to get off. Oh hopefully. no! Yeah, no. My car is like that's enough of that. <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> sure. But like after the, the, the shit I went through, I was like, I don't care. I'm just gonna put them on. So I have I had all my fail safes on. Um, not not that engine. Round one, I lost the engine. Then I did all the upgrades to not have any more catastrophes. And then did all those upgrades. It was great from round two, a few OSW events. Round three, and that's round four. It was all good. And then round four. Uh, right after my battle with Connor Osoli, I hit the finish line. Right after the finish line, I hear the, 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 the cylinder, lost the cylinder, like misfiring. And I'm like, <laughs> didn't sound like I lost a core pack or something. That sounded like I friggin' did something real good. And I'm like, oh my god. I think I just lost the engine again. I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> I lost the battle. I did a shitty fall out and I just fell asleep in the line. Anyway, I got to the pit. I was like, I know. People, oh, it can't be blowing up. It's not blowing up. My crew was like, it's not. I'm like, listen. I've done this five times. It's blown up. I'm telling you, I know it. We checked the map. No fails had kicked in. The map looked fine. Yeah, yeah. Weird. This is where it gets to interesting. And then uh, we pull apart spark plugs. All the plugs look fine, except for cylinder three. Cylinder three is destroyed. Like, like chewed. smashed, chewed, melted, Fuck. nasty. Damn. I look through the head and to the bottom, and I'm like, yeah, that is stunzo for sure. Get home, pull the engine out, pull the head, and cylinder three is. You saw it. I saw your picture earlier. It looks like an earthquake hit it. <laughs> how, how, so, as somebody who has also pulled their engine a lot of times, Many times. How, how good are you at it? Very, very you, good. You know, like, are you like me? You know exactly, exactly. which lines can stay on and oh, which yeah. lines can, and how long it takes, and how many breaks. Build your car based oh, yeah. off of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, see, I'm not yelling. Yeah, but yeah. I understand. If I, if I hurt, if I hurt the transmission at the clutch shakers, I've made it so I have room to get it out quick. Same, I've dude. Built- you showed me this fucking video of this dude. I think it was like a NASCAR or something. And this dude had completely tubed the interior of his car, tubed around the trans tunnel, and he had this fucking handle on this oh, on this yeah. bar to it's where a if TH you unbolt, guy. Okay. yeah if you unbolt the trans you just slide it down this fucking sick. bar yeah. and it pulls the like trans like coaster. three feet off sick. of the engine that's sick and you can just it's do whatever he, you want he's one like, of those guys that doesn't do he didn't have a uh, uh, a converter he could change yeah. so he would yeah. physically have to change oh, converters God. wow and I was like I mean, and what, and, and like the the fucking hillbilly sloppy bell buckle person in me is. I'm like, I'm like, damn, that is awesome. And then also, I'm like, dude, just go get a fucking circle D style and be done. You yeah. know, like, what the fuck, man. Yeah, but so. um, yeah, then they, that happened. I'm like, and round five was supposed to be right now, but they canceled it because of the hurricane. And I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't gonna drive it anyway. Yeah, I was like, gonna say that's a kind of a good thing. Like, dude, clutch up, fucking yeah, get it back together. That's what I'm working on. So, um. I'm like, okay, if I'm doing the, if I'm, if this, okay, first off, but it, the issue is I have a very, very old stock modified harness that is, it's not, it's not working right. Why are you with these? Hit us up. That, that's what, that's what, that's what's coming. Yeah, but dude, you're you. Why don't you just get a, I'm working on it. I'm just saying, like, you're, you just make a post on Facebook and be like, hey, I need to borrow a harness for like two to a weekend. I mean, yeah. my friend has one in his car. I could, I could technically that's do that. That's what I'm saying. Just borrow like, the harness, go to the like, thing and then throw him 500 bucks and you win. It's already so far away. I can't even care about. I mean, if they reschedule it for like two months from now or a month from now, sure. I whatever. see what you're saying. But if it was like, no, nah, whatever. I'm already done. It's already late this year. I'd just take a break, chill. I did four rounds. That's a lot. Like, it's a lot. Like, five rounds is a lot. Like, yeah, I agree. A lot yeah. of work. So, like, I was like, okay, if, I, if I'm doing the. If, okay, wait. The issue was the harness. The harness was the issue. <laughs> and the right. injectors. I wasn't trying to fuck you up. No, the, the, <laughs> the injectors, I lost. Uh, I had a failed injector on Cylinder 3. And it obviously. <laughs> Killed that piston very bad. Now the head's hurt. It's all. It's the whole catastrophe. It sucks. But again, it's not a motor issue. You can. I can, again. I can put Rad Dan's engine in my car, and it will be probably get hurt by Vincent. Like again, like every single piece of your car that powers your motor electronically, mm-hmm. mechanically, 
all is so critical. It's so important. So you got you got to have that on deck and have that ready to go and have it perfect at all times. Because if one thing, one sensor, like oh, a yeah. cool temp sensor goes with fuel, with the ECU, it sends a certain amount of fuel per temperature or in timing and stuff and all that ignition, all that in one. If, if two of those things get mixed up or one of those things gets mixed up. You're Dude, that's have, that's one big thing that I like. Issues. Building my car, I just did not want to fuck with whatsoever. Yeah. Is wiring. I, I, I don't know it. anything about it. I, I'm very like, yeah. I know positive and negative. <laughs> that's Same. it, bro. I uh, so. <laughs> I actually wired in um, my search tank setup with my ECU and the, and the lift pump and all that, and I had my friend Paul kind of guide me through it. And once I did it, I understood it. Yeah. And then next day it was gone. <laughs> yeah, it did, exactly. But Taylor yeah. Ray was telling me that you have to just do it and dive into it and do it. But like, don't do it on your on your pro car, guessing on on, on how to do it. And if you if you follow instructions, you can probably do it. But with me, I don't feel like wasting time with it. I don't want to want to bother. I just want to yeah, drive at this point. That's so how I'm, I am. I'm gonna it's order more of a time thing. You know, I'm gonna order a pro harness, per spec for my car, and plug it in. Yeah. Get new injectors. Rebuild the motor. Again, I've done it many times. It's not hard. Put it back in and go. People don't understand. It's, it's not an engine issue. It's not. I yeah. promise you, it's not. They're proven. It's just one little mistake, one little thing as an injector or wiring can mm. toast your, your yeah. setup. And that's what's happened with me, I unfortunately. Completely all out, dude. Yeah. I bought every little thing that I yeah. could to add on to the Pro Series harness just yeah. in case I might need sure. it one day. No, that's the thing, Five too. point grounding, like yeah. the, even the little adapter so that if you wanted to hook something into a wire, it's already yeah. readily available where you can easily I access just, it. I don't know why I was so stubborn on getting the harness. I don't know why. I just, yeah, it dude, was just one of those, those, those things with me. It was just like I didn't even think about it. <laughs> You know what I mean? I have a full S13 swap RB harness yeah. that I could use and modify to right. make it work with the Z, but I was like, dude, that's just a headache that I am yeah. not willing to no, put the yeah. time into. And again, it sucks because the engine is the common denominator of what gets hurt. It's not like a blow a fuse. It's yeah, the motor. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the most expensive part of the car. <laughs> but well, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, but now it's we know that's the issue. And now trickling down to that six engines later <laughs> it sucks and it sounds bad it looks bad for jay-z's and people are telling me to swap my car and change this but like i know for a fact that's what i want it's not yeah, i'm gonna yeah. do what i want and no, that's it's not like it's not the jay-z i respect every not setup i i love all different stuff but like the jay-z's is kind of my thing and i love the sound of it i like what i it's just what i've always wanted and i'm God, I continue with it. you know it is all engines are good well not all all proven engines are good <sighs> Yeah, you know what's what I mean? the worst engine? Oh God! If Subarus. you if you had to tell Definitely somebody Subarus. getting into drifting, like, oh, stay away from this fucking motor, no matter well, what. The, the thing is now, the deal is when we got into drifting, probably there wasn't. I mean, there was Z's, but Z's weren't the car to do to you know to go by. It was an S chassis because they were cheap, and yeah, now yeah. they're not. But now everybody everywhere has a Z. I was gonna say, but transferred those engines mm. completely suck to work on. But they work. They work. Yes. If you don't, but they dude, if you don't break. H R D E. Oh, H R. The hell. What? H R. No. You're fucking retarded. H R. No way. H R has been no, nothing. Okay. But I've, I've seen, seen nothing Dave Briggs's. Dave Briggs's Mazworks D E was ridiculous. That thing. I think it was D. I'm pretty sure. I think. My D E, dude. I didn't even put a fucking no, no, catch cam. They're all on. good. They it's all work. Like but I've seen them all break. Again, my point to all of this is everything breaks. Right. If well, you're going to break. It can last four years. The fifth year, it's going to break. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just what it is. Like, I, my first Jay-Z lasted The year you expect it to and never then it break, broke. it's going to break. Right. And then it runs the best right before it breaks, too. Every time. <laughs> kind of. Sometimes. You don't have, you don't have enough crankcase pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the thing is also, like, with, with support and technology of all sorts these days, like, you can make anything live forever. Like... Technology, if you're as not, in, yeah. If you're not wild, yeah, you can make. You know what I mean? Work. Like, like, like all the technology on FD cars, like it's wild. The motor in my car has been pissing bearing for like really? four months. Yeah. And like I, I let it ride for a little while, and then after a little while, I was like, "You piece of shit!" Yeah. So I just unplugged the gate, and it made like 17 pounds. It was really Ooh. fast then. Yeah. But like you know, yeah, I agree with you about technology because yeah. like, dude, 
Back when I first got into LS Motors, dude, you had to fucking, like, you ordered something off of eBay. It came with a little chip. Yeah. You had to solder it into the thing so that you could get in there and, you know, just, just to change your timing map to run more timing. Right. Dude, I don't even have to do anything. The only thing that would make my Holly cooler uh, is Holly, if it... Yeah, Holly's... I mean... Dude, it, we got a boat behind us. Yeah, <laughs> I I, I do want to talk about LZ. So how did how did you kind of get to know LZ in the first place? I know it was kind of BMX, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. So BMX again started doing BMX for even before I knew Adam. Um, everybody was riding BMX, and then like I said, we're all in the cars and whatever. Well, this is before cars. Way before cars, actually. Kind of like right like twelve thirteen ish. I think I met Adam when I was twelve thirteen. Damn. Yeah. Wow. That ago. young? Yeah. I was about. I think. Holy shit. Twelve thirteen fourteen. Right there, pretty short. Yeah, yeah. And he would come to my local skate park. He lived in Connecticut, obviously, but he would come down. He had family down close to my local skate park, Barrichell, in Winter Garden, Florida. And we would ride there every once in a while when he would come down. He'd let me know, and Jimmy sometimes too. Um, and then, um, yeah, but he's rode BMX for a long time. He finally moved down to Florida for college, and then obviously hung out more because he's here full time. And then he ended up moving here full time because he was already here doing his whole thing his business was here with the merch and all that mm-hmm. and obviously osw was here his car is here all that you know everything you know and uh i think i was still in high school yeah yeah and then i did my detailing myself um um after high school till like 27 yeah 2017 ish then i bought i bought my 240 before i worked for adam yeah i bought my first well the mm-hmm. third the first drift car black sr car, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh hatch and then uh I, uh, I, it was right before Grid Life. And I told myself, if I buy this car, I'm not going to Grid Life and I can't afford it. <laughs> so I wasn't going. And I actually ended up going to um, his shop that day to detail his cars. And he's going to Grid Life. And I'm like, no. And he's like, why? And I'm like, oh, you know, I bought this car. I can't really afford it. Oh, okay. And then a few minutes later, he calls me and he's like, hey, would, would you like be interested in like like working for me like, like full time and like, you know, maintaining the cars? doing shop stuff doing this doing that. you know just doing just give me a quick rundown i'm like yep <laughs> i was like yeah so that's how you like started working with yeah LZ? that i did i did I, start, I, started detail, I started detailing his cars but before i worked for him like, yeah, like yeah my business cleaning his cars as a young kid hmm. and then he asked me to work for him and then it just kind of just took off from there and i actually left working for him like a year or two into that quit for a year because I don't remember why. I think it was quit for a year and then went, got like a normal job and detailing, made, made more money, whatever it was. And then uh, a year later, he started like doing more stuff and like started hanging out more. And then um, kind of got, I kind of just like got back working with him. Kind of naturally just kind of evolved. I was helping out kind of here and mm-hmm. there and then it just like got back in the full time. And then kept going. Yeah. Yeah. And then I left like. That was when he was at the ago. old shop, right? That, or well, was that even before so that shop? The first time I worked for him was at the uh, the old, old, old shop, like the smallest one. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. The second, technically second shop. The third shop, the one with PSI, with, was the main one for the past few years. That was like right before next to BC? Yeah. Okay. That was the third shop. And I left right before he went to that shop. And then a year later, or even nine, ten months later, something like that, mm-hmm. I came back. And then we were there until then the compound happened. And then, then I, was, I left after that. Damn. So you got to kind of and see the compound and stuff oh, yeah, before yeah. We, you left. I helped move all the. I'm not talking mic again. I helped move all the stuff, <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff um, um, over there and got moved in. And then it just, you know, I wanted to do my own thing, so I was like kind of over it. So. When I wake up. Yeah, I didn't drink any this morning. Day. It kind of set me off a little bit this morning, but dude, yeah, if if your coffee's not right or if one little <laughs> thing in the morning just doesn't go as normal as planned, that'll fuck your entire day. Up. Oh, dude, like, yeah. I mean, when I film my videos, like sometimes I just don't want to film me taking apart my car, or work on the car. I want to put music on and just do it. But That's I gotta, how pu- I, am. I gotta push and you know do it. There's some videos where the effort's not all there because I want to, you know, like I said, just you do just want to do the thing. Yeah. But I have to do it if it's like good content i'm not gonna not film it but like there's days where it's like like again like the engine thing with me and doing that like my whole i hate it because my whole content is 
fucking going drifting at Clutch Shakers, OSW. And there goes the engine. Fuck, take it apart, rebuild it. And then four <laughs> times later, here we are again. You know how what I mean? You, uh, how do you record your content? Well, like, what do you record it on? I have G7X. Shit. G7X? I hate it. I got it a while. It was, uh, my girlfriend got it for Christmas. Good gift. Very expensive. Yeah, it yeah. works. But I want a better viewpoint. That makes sense. I don't, I don't like the viewpoint it gives. I want like, like Jimmy's videos and his like how it's kind of wide and very oh, clear. Oh yeah, I think yeah. that's probably the Sony. He's what's it called? A seven. Yeah, I, I think, think so. I could be wrong, but that's like, what we want to get for our A cam and then looks, get another another one of these Panasonics yeah. for the. Like it looks so much better, but like I, I just use it. When I get to that yeah, point, I'll yeah. do it. But like I, I try to do as much content as possible. But like content costs money. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. You can the do new it. G7X yeah. has a little bit wider of an angle. Does it? Did you know that? I have even. I don't even know cameras anymore. <laughs> I drift the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too much of a nerd. No, now, I, so. I would like to, but you know, especially when you start doing comp cars, it's very expensive. So like all the funds go to the car. You know? Yeah, that's fair. But quality is important. I should get a better camera. But honestly, sometimes, I mean, Cletus, I'm not calling them out. Cletus Taylor. They use their iPhones yeah. most of the time. Whistle and yeah, Diesel. Dude, whistle, I don't wh- get that. Cody, yeah, yeah. Whistle and Diesel. Yeah. Oh, you know. He comments on our stuff sometimes. We try to get Does him to he? come on. He doesn't like have a drift 20 car. Twenty minutes from our house. Yeah, oh, he, right, you're up there. He lives yeah, close like right to us. And so our super secret sauce plan was to like get people to get him to engage enough where he would agree to go on. And then once he gets there, it's like, hey, before we do that, we're gonna like take my car because like my car is pretty wild yeah. for a street yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, you can just ride with me, and we'll go down here, and I'll take him street drifting, and get all the footage from oh, yeah. it, you know. He, he <laughs> came to the compound randomly one time. And Adam took him for a ride drifting in the Z in the rain out of nowhere. Yeah, I saw that, that, was video. that video. Right? Yeah, Dude, right, he was just, and he was freaking out. And like Adam's Z car now has nitrous on it. I, I know. did back then too. Okay, it so, just wasn't on. Like so, it's so like it's so still not even crazy pretty, car. Pretty crazy. Like, yeah. But dude, he'll tell you, dude. I'll fucking send it down the back road. So like, I think, it, I think it would be really good footage because it's this dude that crushes and fucks shit up for fun. Yeah. Going for a ride in a 700 horsepower car, he'd be like, "What the fuck, bro? Yeah. These guys are nuts." Yeah. So I think that'd be cool. I wish he'd come on the podcast. That'd be. Awesome for you guys for sure. Oh yeah. Need to get so this one soon. is like this one has n- not anything to do with it. Are is is the podcast is do people talk about this behind the scenes? Is there like yeah, s- really? It's funny. My my friends that like just moved down here from Colorado, Isaac and and Paul, like they sent me a video. I think it was about Adam. You guys on your on your shorts on the reels or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm literally going to do a podcast with them in a few weeks. No, you're not. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> it was really funny. No, but like that. Like, that I, what caught my attention about you guys? Like literally, I was like, I want to start a podcast. Not now. This is before. If I were to, I would do it how most known good podcasts do their thing when they do the quick reel shorts mm-hmm. with the words on the screen, something that's attracting. And that shit works. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's good because it's interesting. Like like talking with your friends or even like like it's, again you bring up things we can think about and then like you get good ideas from it and good content. So it's it's really cool. Oh uh, yeah. I'm I'm like obsessed with podcasts. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's majority of the time I, I'm stuck in a little hole at work in my own office. So right. I'm like I'm I'm listening to podcasts while I'm editing and doing all this stuff. And <laughs> like my biggest influences were probably impulsive. Yep. Roman Atwood. And um, what was that other one? Fresh and fit. Fresh and fit. That's I like, a I like, I like good Bert one. and Tom. Segura. That's a little controversial. You guys, watch, it's off topic. I don't give a fuck. But you guys but watch Bert and Tom Segura's podcast? Yes. Oh God, dude, yes. Bears, that dude makes me laugh so hard. Especially when Tate's <laughs> dude Tate's video went out. They're, so, they're funny. They're funny, but it's always like I'll like listen to it and then they'll start making each other laugh. That hit, that, there it is. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as Bert starts doing his squeal, <laughs> yeah, dude, I can't handle it. Dude, I can't okay, do it anymore. Story, me, like, me, I can't listen. Me and me and Pat, we were driving oh, to Adams Red Cross Country one time. We went from Florida. To Texas to damn Michigan, a long trip. But he turned me on to that podcast, and me and Pat laughed so hard the whole time. Dude, yes. dude, he, they're hilarious. He, and then Pat laughs, he makes me laugh even harder with Bert laughing, and then I'm dying. If you yeah. want, and he's driving yeah. a damn rig with everything Adam owns, not everything Adam owns, yeah. like a lot of stuff in it, and, I, and we're like crying, laughing in the middle of Texas. Dude, it was so funny. But no, like, looking for road trips and stuff. But like when that guy starts, when Bert starts squealing, I can't handle myself. <laughs> I just shit. told him about this podcast literally last night. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the You Should Know podcast? I think it sounds familiar, dude. I should know about it. <laughs> uh, this th- it's two dudes. Uh, they post on TikTok like once a week, 
that you only get one clip a week. Yeah. And but their podcast is the funniest yeah. podcast I've ever seen in my fucking life. Yeah. And their clips on TikTok and stuff for like two minutes long. But everybody watches every right. fucking second of it because they are just the way they tell stories. You heard it last night. It's just different. Right. They have nothing to do with anything. They have n- they're not niche based whatsoever. But they just, yeah, just tell fucking the funny ass yeah. stories, and it's that's dude, one thing it's hilarious. Podcasts and certain content you do because like you do a podcast like that, and it entertains everyone. And then you do drifting that's kind of small compared to that. It's very hard to get traction. Mm-hmm. But you guys have done a good job with that, which is well. So it's, it's, still a, it's all it's we do it we do we do drifting because it's because we're both drift guys, so we right. like drifting. But it's also like we also do like YouTube updates. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, sure. for the guys yeah, that yeah. watch Boosted Boys, I don't know if y'all know he just fucking cracked off a 774 in the MR2. I saw that right Dude, here at the at the track. That's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's flying, bro. Oh yeah, it's moving. That's like that's, turning the I earth backwards. That's, that's what our biggest deal is. Is we're very quick on topic. That, that's all. We're, we're very on yep. it whenever it comes to topics as far as YouTube space yep. and just yeah so if you don't really know what's going on for the most general. part you can figure out you, know, <laughs> you can go watch whatever the latest episode is and you can kind of yeah. figure out like yeah. speaking of Taylor Ray just finished his uh, the BMW that he just got he just upgraded all the suspension yeah, just, and everything yeah, I just, watched, just, watched, that, watched that video this morning yeah I got it all cleaned up for him that thing was nasty Ugh. Yeah, I did a full, you know, clean up on it for him. And then I did a whole ceramic coating on his truck and then the Fummins and got them all clean. He hasn't cleaned his cars ever. And he bought that M3, I didn't clean it. it, took it to the mountains. Oh, God, it was so dirty. I, I got I got done with it. He's like, looks brand new. Taylor Ray, you slob. Did, he said did. he'd come on. No, oh, yeah, I told him to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I did uh, Ben, you know, his friend Ben, I did his M3 too, two weeks ago. Fuck d- yeah. Detailed that one too. Those cars are cool. I, hate, I used to hate those cars, but they're pretty sick. Yeah, but they're very I, would, expensive. I wouldn't even let what you clean my car and you just judge me. Yeah, Don't but like my people, people say right people now. say that, and then I'm like, listen, I've had eighty million times worse than whatever yours is. You Don't gotta worry. About it. It's part of the game. <laughs> have you ever? My job. Have you ever been like, fuck no, fuck no, I'm not cleaning that. No, never. No, not like even like the booger people. And I can just charge them more. <laughs> I mean that's fair. Like whenever I do customer stuff, like if, for example, like if I, like when they say kids, that's like all right, I'm not giving you a price till I get there. Yeah. Because like oh it's not that bad. I just have kids. No, I'll be like listen, um, when I get there you get a price. My idiot stupid self the other day quoted this guy. I'm like okay, I'll, I'll we'll see. I get there I'm like I'm not charging you 150 dollars. Like I'm not. Yeah. Even touching yeah, this yeah, unless yeah. I do this. Okay, you know, because yeah. like people will are picky, but like people understand they'll pay. Yeah, and like I, you know, over the years it goes up. You got you got to go with the game because like yeah, you can be losing money. Someone else is making way more money than you for the same job. Yeah, yeah. So can, we talk about you can, that. You can so. beat it, but so like, actually, you know. that's a good topic because I've seen a lot of people on TikTok that start um, detailing businesses, oh, yeah. and they tell you focus on the ones that are that Satisfying. actually keep their car clean because yeah. those are the repetitive customers, and the people that sure. don't are the ones that are just <laughs> once in a blue moon customers, and you'll never. You'll spend so, more time cleaning their crap. It depends on what you do. So the best bang for your buck as a detailer is definitely like the paint corrections and ceramic coatings. Because like you do one of those a week, you can range from five hundred to thousand plus dollars of profit for yourself. Because like it's very expensive and it takes a lot of time, and that's what it is. So if you do one, two, or three of those a week, depending on your quality of detailing, like if you're a good detailer, you spend a, a good day or two, depending on the quality of the condition yeah. of the car. You know what I mean? Like you gotta like chemicals and product are expensive now. Like it's it's wild. If you don't buy in bulk, it's very expensive. Expensive, so, like, time consuming, and fuel to get to places. You know, it's like it's like. But thing is, with me, is like a lot of detailers will quote, not quote. They'll schedule two, three cars in a day. Oh, I just made this amount of money. I'm like, cool. I made the same amount of money on one car for better quality. Yeah, yeah. I can take my time, not rush and miss or make a mistake and make. Maybe a hundred dollars less or more than you. You did three cars. Yeah. For me, it's Enjoy like you know, like a Tesla. You buy a Tesla, not buying for quality, buying for technology. Yeah. For me, you're paying for quality and not. I'm not doing six cars in a day, kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I tell people like, listen, I'll, I'll do it, but like, I'm gonna charge you this, and it's gonna be perfect, kind of thing. Yeah. Because yeah. like, if I go wash a car Get and do an exterior wash and make fifty dollars on a wash and shine or whatever, that's worthless to me. All right. If yeah. I'm making two hundred plus dollars on one car. I'll do it for friends or like people that don't really want to do it or long time customers. But like mm. my main goal is to get, you know, 
Let's take it over with quick in the, in the week. Take the rest of the week off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause like I don't want to kill myself, but yeah, I'm gonna start doing it on the side. I'm getting a a, a a big boy job like next week, so I'm gonna be doing that. So can you tell yeah. us what that is, or is it um, like under? It's wraps? like an aviation company. No shit. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing like customer service for them, and then detailing on the side. So that'll be like a good job, like big boy Heck job. Yeah. So Hell it's gonna yeah. be good pretty for you. sick. That's cool. The, the physical labor kills me. My body from BMX is hurting. I'm, yeah. I'm 25. <laughs> I feel like I'm freaking 60. It's bad. Oof. Yeah, Big dude. Time. You still so, ride and stuff now? I haven't ridden in a while. No. I, I have my bike still, but like, it's just, everything goes. I wish I still to work and drift. And yeah, family. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know, just wait till you get a little bit older. Oh, I know, dude. <laughs> I wear suspenders because I'm a salesman, <laughs> yeah. right? And I just it's because of a habit. Yeah. So then I'll switch to a belt when I'm like doing regular stuff like this, yeah. and just switching to a belt, I can feel like different nerves and yeah, stuff yeah, in my yeah. body. For being sure. Like, hey, what is this? This oh, is dude, weird. Even after a comp weekend or a normal drift weekend. My body hurts from being in that damn seat. Yeah, like, you're, you're like, yeah. in the seat, your spine or your back, and throw it around. Dude, like, fuck yeah, hurts. You just get old, man. It, it sucks. sucks. <laughs> Terrible, but like, you know, I don't. I, I, here's the thing: if I didn't have VMX, I would not be sitting here right now. Right. So all. it's all yeah. a good trade off. My know? whole life, See, my thing is, was, you know, it's all BMX <laughs> until now. That's that they yeah, BMX. Yeah. BMX is a common denominator to where I mean, a lot of the Florida drift scene is now. Everybody knew each other through BMX, and like. Mm -hmm. One thing I mentioned too, BMX to have good hand-eye coordination and good, you know, like viewpoints of things, how to hit something, how to do a trick, how to how to do a trick, how to properly do it, mm -hmm. and like everybody has good hand-eye coordination is through BMX and drifts now is learns much faster and progresses faster. Yeah, every single person that hasn't ridden BMX that, that that drifts now progresses slower, and everybody has ridden BMX. I've seen in my own eyes progress like quick. This is a good segue. So, do you have a simulator? I don't, but I, I drive on them. Uh, Pretty regularly from on friends and stuff. Okay, I need to get one, but like again, the money just goes to the car. The real yeah, stuff. No, no, you know no, what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. Dude, I've been playing on Xbox doesn't really count, but it's still, I get I get the little itch to drive away from having some sort of sideways feel. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I have a I have a full. It's the whole oh, God, shebang. I want one so bad. So it, it ain't no Taylor Ray setup yeah, it's, or anything. It doesn't but, move. Oh, but, it's, but other like, than moving, I like when it it's moves. I. I think I could probably see this is like one of those this is one of those like I think this is I one of those city boy that. jokes like I think I could probably I could probably get away with one effect. of those in my house but I think I'd probably wake her up too many times like with five, you stuff. know what I mean yeah. moving around she'd be like get the fucking bed <laughs> oh yeah, you know? my, yeah same so I don't have it it doesn't move but I do have a uh, Thrustmaster and I do have a, a VR system yeah, it's yeah. an HTC 5 and the only thing that I will say is that, dude, sometimes I just want to play Forza. I still play it on the wheel. <laughs> That's the original thing, you know? But, dude, it's like, the like, the only thing, like, dude, it's great to get the, you know, you learn, like, I have, I have straps now that hold my headset to my seat because now I have a Hans in my car. Oh. So, so when I turn my head, I've have a really bad habit of over the course of three years, I've learned to okay. just turn my head all the way. Right. But you can't do that anymore. So now I've learned to just cut my eyes like this yeah. to keep my head from moving to like train myself. See, I haven't had a Hans yet, dude. It's like I it's, didn't even know you had a Hans. <laughs> Here's the thing, real quick. Yeah, I got there, it from too, uh, you, uh, yeah. uh, my girlfriend. Got it for me for Christmas or whatever. It's oh, like that's a, cool. Yeah, it's, oh, it, yeah. it should be like again. Safety's a thing, but like I'm surprised. Quest Sugar doesn't, doesn't require fire suits and a Hans on the bank. It's it's so, it's so weird I didn't know to me. They didn't require a fire suit. No, uh, after my fire and a few other fires that were there, I'm pretty shocked they don't have that. But again, I don't want to start this because it's going to cause the whole thing. Because drivers will hate me for it if it gets a thing because they don't want our fire suits. But <laughs> but that's ignorant as fuck. It's just what it is. They, they'll get they'll it'll get back to me. But like I'm, I'm being a, a hypocrite so right weird. now because I here's the thing. I broke the curse because I thought every time I wore a fire suit, my car broke. I didn't wear a fire suit around two this year. I did really fucking good. And I was like, okay, I'm never wearing a fire suit ever again because I'm doing good. But then the car broke again, so it's not the fire suit. Damn. Jesus. It's, it's, it's just like a, you know, it's like, I mean, yeah, hey, you're fine doing and, this. And it worked. I feel like when in comp competitive driving, you're going to look at every little aspect, Dude. no matter how silly it sounds, yes. to make your driving better. And it's, just, it's a, a, a mind thing. With that. Like, literally, like, I never did that good. I didn't wear a fire suit. 
I was okay, whatever. And then I didn't wear them the rest of the rounds. Still didn't break. And then I finally broke without a fire suit. So I'm going to probably wear a fire suit next time. But <laughs> it was just a, a mental thing. But like, I, I finally, I, dude, I don't know how I got to the subject. But anyway, I, like the mental thing of the car breaking, of the engine stuff every time was. Oh, it'll mess with you. So hard yeah. to get over until round, till about halfway through round two, and I was doing pretty good. It went away until. Even as round four, it happened. Which now it's I, like, oh, I'm used to it at this point, kind of thing. I was going to say, I think that's part of the reason that LS motors have such a thing about them, because there's people like me that are like... Sorry, instead, there's sirens going off in the back. Yeah, yeah just happens. deal with Should it. Should we wait? No. All right. So, like, instead of, like, where a Jay-Z block is, you know, what do they cost? Three grand? Two, three grand? Wait, as in, like, full G, like assembly? To like, replace the engine, what's it cost? What well, depends on what you do. Like a stock bottom to end? To replace or? what you were going to blow up the next time. If you didn't upgrade. Like right now? Or like stock? Uh, Like three motors or, in, let's say, say. Oh, God. Where you weren't trying to be crazy, you were just trying to get the car back going again. Oh, I mean, it's that's cheap then. Because like you can get, like again, stock pistons and rods, a set of them used from somebody in good condition, five, six hundred bucks. Okay, yeah. so... Can you still buy them from like dealerships and stuff? Pistons, yeah, yeah. No shit. I think it's rocks so too I'm not cool. sure. <laughs> so you can buy a complete five three long block for that, and right. that is I what creates it. the sure. LS sloppy mechanic. But thing. even down here, you can find deals like that. But yeah, I feel you. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, here, listen, totally yes. stop. Listen. All right, listen, you JDM fanboys. All right, I'm just saying <laughs> that that is the reason that it's there. I'm not no, saying it's I, right I totally or wrong. Get it. I totally I'm just get saying it. like, but. You, you get that thing where it's, where Jay Z guys are like, man, or or SR guys or Rotary guys, or whoever. You know what's funny? They start thinking in their head. They're like, man, I hope this thing doesn't pop. And then you start thinking about that. Then you get up on the bank and you're like, damn, I really hope it doesn't pop. <laughs> then you have some brainless idiot like sure. me that's like, I don't care if it blows up at all. It's only four hundred dollars. Right. Let's find wow. out if it's it will. Funny. I wasn't even finished the pricing yet. That was just rocks and pistons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, so that's what I was saying. Is like, you know, you can find an LS motor even in today's inflated market for about a thousand dollars, and as long as you can like bore scope it and make sure that yeah. it, it's okay, yeah. you know. Hold on. Another boat? I'm build, dude. I'm building. A, I'm building oh, a yeah. straight up. I'm gonna build a straight up like missile drag car because my brother's building a really fancy roller. Uh, roll race and drag S2000. Sick. It's going to be like 1100 horsepower. God. It's a super crazy BTR engine that he's put together. And I'm going to helicopter glue <laughs> heads onto a 4.8. And I'm just going to run fucking 60 pounds to it. Oh and I'm, God. dude, it's going to be hilarious because it's like, dude, if it blows up, it's like, all yeah. right, so what am I out? $200 yeah, helicopter glue? Like, you know, who cares? It's funny because even down here, like, you'll find deals like that. But like, even like the five threes are like really expensive now. Oh really? Yeah, like two what, grand. A, oh my what? god! Yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll find no, some deal. I'm telling you, stop buying stuff in Florida. You're inflating your own market. No, it's just, bad. Just, it's bad. just DM me and I will find you one for like a thousand dollars, and we'll that's find max. you for twenty bucks on the curb. Yeah, that's like, fucking crazy. <laughs> no, it I, is. It I is. have. I use five three heads. As fucking like wheel chocks at my house, straight <laughs> up. Vi- well, and one of my videos that I posted on my personal account the other day, uh, my my car is sitting on one of those fucking wheel chocks, yeah. straight up. Oh yeah, just a head. People Don't are fucking Jay-Z nuts. Heads. That's a GE shit head, but <laughs> different. Head work costs a lot of money in Jay Z's too. Good Jesus, dude. Well, you got to find somebody that knows what they're doing. You know. Well, yeah, even, yeah, the, even yeah. the internals of it are pricey, but you know, I get free or at cost parts. But even like I have to pay for it sometimes. But like if I'm in a rush, I got to you know. Just do it, you know. Yeah, but like, think. Fuck, you know what I hate? Even though it's you need it, you have to do it. Machine work. I hate paying and waiting for machine work. Yeah. Like I found, I like I have to get my head fixed right now. Well, because they're I all found, the same. Yeah, I, I found another <laughs> head, and I'm like, listen, I can go buy this. And it has all the internals I want, and it's poured and everything, and it's in Orlando. It's a little bit more pricey than it'll cost me to like get it fixed and wait. But I can go buy it and go. Here, done. Instead Dude, of waiting, something about just having it right six in there. weeks and paying all the stuff and assembling it. Oh god, you know. But we'll all, all machine like shops headache. are like that too. It's all some fifty-five-year-old guy. They, I've been doing this for, for sixty t- years. For sixty years, even though I'm fifty-four, and yep. you know, you're going to wait just like everybody else. They don't put nobody in front of anybody else, and I'll let you Dude. know when it's done. They're all like, that. yeah. And it's like, bro, it's fine. Just fucking do the thing. the thing. You know? Here's the thing, though. It can be expensive if it's done swiftly, quick. I agree with that. But when you got to pay yeah. that much money and it's four months later, no. Right. Absolutely. I agree. Not. My machine shop, I'm not telling who because it's my secret. Not, well, it's in Florida, but like 
his secret is you can pay an extra twenty five percent to you know. Yeah, yeah. Get it done. I'm like, jump up that line real quick. Here, <laughs> yeah. Get it done. I'm not. I'm not waiting. Damn, six months. I'm paying you this. It's worth the money. Give me it done. The machine shop we just sent That's a Caleb's great motor off. Plan. Yeah, I agree. Capitalism, baby. Dude, the machine shop that we just sent all of my brother's stuff off of. We had to go up there and pick it up, and we get almost up there, and they're like, "Hey, we know we told you it was done today, but it's not done today." And like, you know. I was like, okay, well, I just got to let you know, today's my only day off, so I would get to working on it if I was you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they still wasn't finished. We ended up having to send Heather up there to go get it. Yeah. Ugh. It was a mess, dude. I can't oh stand it. It's not like, dude, and it's not that I don't think that the machine shop guys are just. There's, they are very busy, but like, same yeah. time. Just manage time better and get it done. Make money. Come on. Yeah, I feel it's kind of, kind of relates to like the drive shaft shop stuff. Pause. Oh fuck! I have a great drive shaft person. Oh, that was sponsored by them. <laughs> you sponsored? Shaft, yeah, drive shaft pro in California. You can be anywhere you want, and will have that thing next day to you made. If you call right now, next day. What's today? It's Sunday. It's different. But t- tomorrow morning, right? Here's an example. A few weeks ago, for FD Utah, Dustin Miles was testing his car in Atlanta on Thursday, the week before FD. Snaps his drive shaft. Anybody can get me a drive shaft? Blah blah. blah. And I'm like, got it. I messaged my guy. Measurements and then the hardened slip yoke for the dog box, and then the winners ran and all that. And what he wanted had it delivered to the damn track as soon as he got to Utah, threw it in the car. Dunzo, perfect. What the yeah. fuck? Uh, yeah. Who's that? A dry shaft pro in California. Dry sh- pro. Put that okay. up here. Yeah, I'll put yeah it send us the link yeah, and we'll, stuff. We'll put it in he, the video and he, description. He takes all that. care of me. Cool guy, and he's quick. Anything, any, any, Shout out literally to you, any dude. Fuck yeah. GM, Toyota, dog box stuff like. Honda, every literally every they have everything in stock. They have like four locations in California. I'm pretty sure too. That's sick. Damn. It's like if, legit, like because that, that dude you sent me to he, in Nashville, he was he was good. But and like, they're steel, aren't and they? he got it done literally right there in front of my face. Yeah. But like his name's Dave. He is the rudest motherfucker <laughs> so I have ever that. met in my life. But he loved me just because I was rude back to him. Like right. I would I could get in his face too. And. Yeah. Um, Dude, he had this one dude that was like came in with a fucking like rat in his fucking hand, a That's little good. puppy dog, and was like telling him all this all these specs. He was and after this dude walked out, he looked at me and he was like, That was the most disgusting thing I've done all day. <laughs> I was like, What the yeah, fuck, dude. bro? Just so, get my drive shaft done. No, dude, like, like again, like for real. Just guys machine shop guys, yeah, dude. No, it's, yeah, it's what it is. The old school is a place in the line called Advanced Drive Line. And you go tell them what you want, and you gotta drop all this shit off and whatever and they take weeks forever and their welds are shit and they're steel and they're heavy as shit yeah you can get whatever you want a dry shaft or aluminum steel even carbon i'm pretty sure and all that kind of stuff and they'll have it fucking done that's crazy quick. yeah is the prices and everything kind of relatively very the same very fair and good quality that's the thing you know what i mean Dude, that's the way to go yeah they're very good for yeah. sure get what you pay for yep but all right well uh what what is what would you consider the most like ideal dream drift car for you? Like if you had an unlimited budget, what would you what would you build? Oh, that's okay. So like I love S chassis, obviously, but they are getting old. Mm-hmm. They are you are old. Kind of like XLR. Oh, God. <laughs> Dude, he keeps bringing this shit up. So I I it's like I basically have that now. Cause I got a winter stiff. I don't have it's not in the car yet, but it will be. I basically have my pro car, you know, S chassis, which is like my dream thing to do. Yeah. But like, it's basically what I have now. But like, if I were to have like unlimited budget type stuff, like it depends. Like, broaden the spectrum, baby. It's there's so many. Like, I love the GR eighty sixes, but like their suspension geometry and stuff just sucks. But their mm. new wide stab stuff they came out with is a game changer for that chassis because if you see uh, Castro and um, who else has GR. What's his name? Castro and freaking what's his name? I can't remember his name. An FT. I'm Dirt. No, wait. What well, the here fuck? GT86, that's, uh, but that's different. There's two G. Oh, uh, Gucci. Gucci. Yeah, Gucci. Yeah, Gucci. Yeah, yeah, Gucci. Yeah, Gucci. King, but his car was kind of slower this year. But like, if you watch the new wise have stuff from their car, all the new stuff they made for that car, it it makes it quite. Oh no, to Gucci. There it is. To Gucci. <laughs> GT86. But he has the new v- version four wise have on the car. So like, I saw that and I was like, damn. These things look sick. What did they switch up on it? Was, they just changed like a bunch of geometry stuff on the knuckle and stuff like that in the rear, and then the front wise fab stuff is all like looks astronomically better than the previous stuff. 
Oh, okay. like so it's just like the geometry of it just looks. They a little... changed some rack stuff too. I'm pretty sure. I think you want an S chassis rack or IS 300 rack, something like that. Yeah. You can. I looked at it at uh, most of the rounds just to see, and I was like, "Dang, it looks sick." So I have a GT86 shell. What did to sell it to a friend? But like, it's still. I still. I can get it back by one or two kind of thing. But like. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I, one of those deals. Some, and BMWs are cool too, but I hate how they look. But they're amazing freaking chassis. I yeah, hate BMWs. Yeah, so. I don't really like BMWs that much. But, but they, they do perform good. Like the the new Supra is sick, but you can't see shit out of it. Mm -hmm. The visual is terrible. It's terrible. It's like like I worked Jeep. for Simon Olsen's FD team and driving his car to grid. I, I had like I could not see. <laughs> it's so tight and the front's so big. But I rode in this car with the, the BMWs are so planted and they feel very good. And like I've been in most BMWs, and like they're great chassis. Like they're sick. They just look that like is a crap great car. You can't see they out of an A90. It's tough, dude. Even stock ones. It's like it, a Camaro. It is tiny in there. Very tiny in the A90s for sure. Damn. I was but just I mean, about look to how say, short the fucking windows are, dude. I mean, I don't. I don't. You can't see shit out of my car, anyways. You know, oh, my real yeah. car. Yeah. I, mean, my I, mean, I don't know. There's, there's, I they're have so, so cool many looking. ideas. It just it just comes down to funds for a pro, like a you know like a dream drift car. But like yeah. I like for me like it was Jay Z dog box. S chassis. S chassis. There it is. Simple as that. Super sick. You know what I mean? That's like my car is like my dream build. Like, right. And it's like ghetto kind of, you know? Don't matter. Yeah. What you want. LS, it don't matter to anybody else. Bad boy transmission. And I'm going to do a different differential so I don't keep breaking axles. But other than well, that, you have. it's stock RS200 stuff. There's the problem. Z axles. Uh, well, that's what that's the plan. So I got a S14 differential. Mm -hmm. I got a 350Z or I got an S14 subframe 350Z yep. differential yep. and uh, and axles. The GK Tech. And I got the GK Tech there. stuff. <laughs> the only thing I haven't done is put it in because I just got the car going again. And okay. like I was telling you, I just got it going and it started pissing bearing. And oh, I was right. like, he fucking wrecked the bitch. <laughs> what <laughs> what uh, ratio is it? The it's a 4.08. Oh, no, no. 3.53. Ooh, it's going to be long. Yeah, which is fine because mm -hmm. I actually I actually like longer gears because it's sure. a street car, you know. Yeah. So I think it'll be cool to go drive around and like we have this thing next year where we want to like get all the cars, all the drift cars that yeah. are like tagged and registered cars, and take them drive, from yeah. my house, drive them up into Normandy, which is a camping area near right. my house, and like camp That'd out, be cool. and grill. Yeah, I think it'd be a very yeah. cool vlog type deal. But I don't think you could do that if I was to. Do a winners in a dog box. No, it, it, you don't want to do that. It's too expensive. Well, that, that's the thing. So, funny enough, so I didn't say this. I kind of have another drift car, kind of another S chassis <laughs> with a Jay Z in it. So, two Jay years, three years ago, uh, this guy who was a fan messaged uh, me and a few other people, like on the LZ team. Hey, I'm selling this car. It's a mint LE hatch, which is the luxury edition. Yeah, with a 2J in it. Imagine a stock four log LE red hatch, very good condition, with a two J two J Z in it with a big turbo. Runs? Oh yeah. Guess how much? In today's money two or ago. two years ago? Still pretty much today. Eleven grand. Nope. Five. Really? That's what I was gonna fucking guess. God <laughs> damn it! You beat me to and it. I want one of you guys to have it, and then Johan and or his friend was gonna buy it, but didn't have the money, and I'm like. Dude, I was I was mid refurbishing my car, my drift. Like took it apart. And I was like, God, dude, this is how. And, and then like, my girlfriend wanted a drift car at the time. We were gonna, gonna get her a Z or whatever. And I was like, Listen, for this price, we can get this car. We can either flip it and make money on it and get make money and get your car. And still get the car. Or get the <laughs> car and keep it because it's freaking sick and it's beautiful, and it's a Jay Z and it's an S chassis. We can kind of match it, kind of cool, whatever. And it's basically free. Yeah. If you think about it, literally, like that's crazy. That, that car alone with the K in it would go fifteen grand, no problem. Oh yeah, easy. And I had, I had no idea what the chassis mileage was either until I got it. And it's also in Tennessee. <laughs> Ironically, and I was here. Obviously, I was in the garage doing the car, and, I, and then well, now I was at work, and now I had to go home work on the car. I called the guy, and we kind of talked about it over the phone. Showed me that it ran perfect, and I'm like, this, "There's has something wrong with this car. There's no way." Yeah. This guy seemed pretty down to earth. And then it was that day was Sunday. And I was gonna go Monday just to go get it. And then I texted Adam. I'm like, listen, I'm going to get this car. It's a crazy deal. Can I have the day off? Yeah, sure. <laughs> got in my buddy truck. My truck was broken at the time. My Silverado was broken. Followed his truck. Got my truck. Got my girlfriend. Drove 13 the hours. Things we do. 13 hours straight to Tennessee. Got there and the cars. I have a whole video on it on my channel. Got the car, dude. It, it, it's like. How, it was like Toyota put the engine in the car. He had a full booklet 
of all the wiring he did. He's an engineer. And he oh did all God. he used all the stock. It's I mean and now it's like, oh, why did you use all the stock stuff? He has all the stock stuff as in the Jay Z harness and the stock S chassis harness. All works together perfectly. I had a big Borg Warner turbo at the time, so it was really laggy. Stock suspension that was thirty years old and went for a Atta test boy. drive and I drove it first, but like this thing was like a boat. Yeah. Dude, it was so dangerous. Body but, rolling you know, like my a girlfriend Kaya, she wanted to drive it to uh you know, it's gonna be kind of hers and mine kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I let her drive it, and it, neither way we're gonna get it. But I was like, "Listen, you can't floor it because you're gonna go into that wall." Because I floored it in the car; it was like floating on a cloud. It was very on stock tires yeah. that were dry rotted, yeah. flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dude, <laughs> oh, it's so nice. Two J, Nami VTI, stock engine, beautiful, perfect. Got the car, drove all the way back to Florida, <laughs> and then uh, now I put my old thirty seventy six turbo on it. It's like a V8, no lag, uh, coilovers, angle, still full interior. We have to do some more stuff to it, but like that's that's just kind of hers. Car. But like we're we're gonna make it so you can drive it, and I can occasionally drive it to have a seat time car. But it's so nice, we don't want to like wreck it or anything. Yeah, yeah. But I still go drive it. It's a JZS chassis, so it kind of works. Yeah. But that's another car I have. I didn't that's fucking mention, cool. But like, yeah, yeah it's, very it's, cool. It's super Fuck sick. Yeah, but dude. the price. Yeah, I should have the price, but whatever. That's a, that's a great fucking. Shout out to Jose. Jose was the guy that he was that deal. That was awesome. That was like his pride and joy. Oh, he built it in Puerto Rico. He was Puerto Rican. Moved his whole family here and moved the car here. It has a Puerto Rican tag on it for the registration on the windshield and everything. And, Keep uh, it forever. <laughs> the, the parks over there are so much more expensive too. And he had receipts for everything. Damn. Every part he bought for that car, the motor, <sighs> the trans, everything. It was. I have a whole box of like history. Of his build that he sold to us for so cheap, I, I thought he was bullshitting me literally because of the price. Wow! But I was like, listen, yeah, they get this car. <laughs> well, See just, <laughs> dude, you, like you wonder because I, I bought my FC for oh, like a fucking grand. It's yeah. like mint condition, nothing. It has all the interior, everything's there. But like, what goes through these people's heads? Like my dude, the dude they that just I bought this from, like shit. he just didn't even know what he had. Like he wasn't even even if it was ten, I, I wouldn't have that much money. But like, but like, no. who says I think oh, people fuck, just, just just get it out of my face? Me. I'm like that. I just fucking get tired. But for of stuff. something that, that, I mean, obviously, like the interior joke, like that. That's that's a real thing. Like nobody wants to deal with selling interior on Facebook Marketplace. But yeah. selling yeah, but a like, car, dude, people it, will deal with it. If 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 I had still had that 300 ZX and I, because I, I gave it to Josh Fogelman, if someone had called me and asked me if I'd take less than 100 dollars from that, you know what I would have done? <laughs> yep. I would have fucking set it on fire and shot it with guns <laughs> and stuff, you know, or with God. you know pew pews. I, I get would, too attached I, to things. I can't do it. Dude, I'm only attached to like my car and like my cat. Other than yeah, that, the rest, the rest of that <laughs> stuff in my house is like there so that the car still operates. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else is like, you know, I yeah. live in a cardboard box and drive my car. The only reason I have a house is because I need to have a girlfriend, according to my mother. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, priorities, right? Yep. But What's that? Exactly. I get in trouble all the time, you know, women. What's putting on the car in there? Whatever. She knows I like it. My dude, honestly, my old is your old. I'm sure your old lady is pretty supportive since she wants For a sure. car, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have. So I used to date a model, right? Oh boy, dude, she's she's a Playboy model now. Oh my god. So I was like always used to like this super insane high maintenance. Like we got to go out to dinner. We yeah, have to drink, like yeah. all this stuff. And like, dude, I became accustomed to that. Over time, and dude, and your car sat yeah, there. Yeah, my car would just sit there because I could never get it to run because I was always like trying to figure out what was wrong with my relationship, and I just realized that it wasn't me; it was her. And so <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna see this. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, fuck but her. seriously though, so like she didn't understand that I really liked cars. Right. And so, dude, whenever we finally broke up, you don't see that from the inside sure. looking out. You only oh, yeah. see it after the fact, and you're yep. like. Oh shit! Like, that yeah, makes sense. You, I'm an idiot, right? <laughs> so then I met my girlfriend, and dude, I've never like had a person that would like tell me like, okay, well, that's enough of whatever it is that you're trying to do in here. Go down there and fix your car. And I was like, really? She's like, yep. Go to go work on your car right now. And I was like, okay, all right, we'll Maybe go do that. Them. Dude, <laughs> had it fired up like two hours yeah. later. You know, like, <laughs> mine, mine, you know like, mine's very supportive if I'm responsible. Like, she wants me to be responsible. Yeah, she doesn't want me to go on $1,000 of debt, which I won't do. Yeah, I People won't, do it yeah. all the time. But yeah, like, yeah. It, it's like if, if the normal life thing's taken care of, then whatever. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. That's exactly how and my that, that's, is. that's fine. But there's sometimes it's like, listen, I gotta buy this. I know it's a lot of money, but if I don't do it, I'm screwed. I should do the, you know, and then ignore it. Ugh, but fine. Yeah. 
But, you know, it's just, it's racing, bro. Have you talked to any racer in any motorsports? We've all been in the same position. Uh huh. A hundreds of times. Yeah, it's just, it's it's just part the of the game. No one's. I mean, there's a very limited amount of people that are wealthy in motorsports, but there is. But there's also people that are, aren't, and then they got to do. They got to do make it work. Yeah, that's yeah. What it is. But because what you love, that's it, that's what it is. Like it's like you love it. You're gonna do everything in your power to do it. Even if you're not making money on it, you go rip the handbrake and floor it, and you're free. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. just what it is. Agree. It's like that. The Fast and Furious and Dom says the ten seconds or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. yeah. The people exaggerate Same that because like it's not bullshit. It yeah, sounds really corny really and fuck. family. The freaking Fast and Furious shit, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like when you, when you get you kayaks get, at family. When you like, <laughs> <laughs> literally, when you get your We're drift going car, bicycling baby. Uh, yeah, you, you get your drift car after all the money's been on it, and then you upgraded it, and you just get into it, and it works perfectly. And it's like the best feeling ever. Dude, like, that yeah. was the rear mount radiator on my car. Oh, see, I really got to do that. God dang it, so Dude, bad, don't. so bad. Dude, it was like. <sighs> It was like, so it's Turbo LS, right. and so Turbo LS gets hot room. as fuck, oh, uh, right? Oh, same thing. So I was like, I would drive, I'd do two laps, it'd get hot as fuck, yeah. I'd turn on my washdown kit, it'd spray the wheels, yeah, and so, okay, yeah. so I'd spray the wheels, and it'd spray the radiator, and it would slowly come back down, but my crossover is in front, not right. under the trans. Okay. So it made everything hot anyway, so by the time I would like pull off track, it's still at like 2.30, yeah. like coming back down, and I was like, God, you guys I gotta... are up there, not even in Florida, it's hot there too, but like, it's... Yeah, <sighs> yeah so it's probably way worse there, so yeah. dude, I put the radiator in the trunk, and like, dude, everyone told me not to do it. Everyone I talked they, to, did they, did they do it before? They probably done it. No, no nobody exactly. else has done it. But they were like saying, like, "Oh, you shouldn't do that. It's too much drama." And I was like, "Okay, you got it." And then I would just shut the garage. Be like, anyways, help me put this radiator back here. You know? <laughs> yeah. So we gotcha, put it bitch. in. So we put it in. And dude, the very first time I took it down the road, I had no fans. I didn't have no anything didn't on the car. Move. Dude, it, it got colder yep. the faster I Literally. drove. Yeah. That's exactly what my friend has. My friend Paul has a. It's funny. He has a uh, what's it called? MK3 Supra with the super. Sick LS in it, 408, I think. Okay. 418. Nice. 418. Bra- the brawler. That's a Texas speed it's, brawler. It's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. And, Very uh, sweet. He put, I think, two water pumps on it. Well, one. I maybe one or two. I don't remember. It's, it's a little turbo looking water pump thingy. They make mm. them. It's a that big. It's a thing, big block. I think it's colder. It's a big block. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. What's it called? B- big block water pump. Yeah. Like they just have hoses that. Yes. That's how old school tech yeah, is. They just yeah, have yeah, hoses. Yeah. Two lines going thing. in. Yeah. yeah, dude, his car gets colder, and I'm like, you stupid motherfucker. It's <laughs> awesome. Well, so, speaking on that, uh, um, what it? Uh, so that's obviously a little overkill for someone getting into drifting. Sure. Oh yeah, I got off top. I don't know how we even got here. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Me. You're good. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> but what? All right. So this is kind of like a. The question you've seen probably before, we ask every single guest. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the one piece of advice that you would give to someone that's just solely getting into drifting, working on minimal budget? So, like just try and put in effort and ask questions. Ask questions to people that's that are way big, more experienced dude. than you. Even if your ego gets in the way, ask questions. If you don't wonder or ask questions or wonder why this is happening or why is the car doing this or whatever. That's a huge issue. Be humble about it and also get a, I hate to say it, get a damn Z. Put a handbrake. I hate those things. Put a handbrake in it. Or even bother. Just freaking stock angle and coilovers and a wall of diff and go do donuts and just mess up the whole time and figure it out. Like there's some people that learn them by themselves and learn with instruction. And then there's not really in between. You kind of got to let people just go at a certain point. But Dude, like, that you know, sounds like the most generic advice ever, but that's like the best. It's, it's, people you, if you're complicated, you're going to get confused. So I'm you know? the opposite. Yeah. You're a visual learner. Very. I have two brothers and they're both visual learners. I'm not like I have to like do it and do it a couple of times I'm before I really both. will like well, learn, yeah, you know, course. like drifting. I'm both, but like school wise. Definitely, definitely visual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, I, you know, it's just like I school was not it for me, and people that know me definitely know that. But like, I can do do engine shit all day long. I don't care about anything. Else. Yeah, I'm That's pretty exactly good. I'm pretty I good am. at engine building. I also didn't do good at school, but it's like. I was never good at like read the directions and then do the thing. Like the reason I know how to take a loss is them back together. It. I gotta do it a bunch of times. That's for example mm-hmm. when me and my girlfriend buy damn what's it called, IKEA furniture. She oh, takes yeah. the directions out, lays it all out. I'm like, get the, 
fucking thing out of here. <laughs> yeah, and give that. me the tool, and I'll just gonna do it. Yeah. Right. And then I'll so be, be like, hey, that's out. gonna go there because common sense. No, it's not. Ten minutes later, you're trying to figure it out, and it goes right there. Yeah, right. right. Damage transactions. <laughs> no, but anyway, back to the whole drifting thing. Like the the <laughs> I buy DMZ, <laughs> buy DMZ, ask questions, <laughs> and just go drive. And listen, don't be a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, it, sample. You know, if there's if you're if you're in the East Coast, shout out the East Coast Drift School, Chris Knapp at E Town. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. Go learn from him. He's great. Yeah. Even, Even if, you're uh, in Florida, if you're in Tennessee, Barry Clapp, he does or, beginner yeah, classes I didn't too. Know, so. I know little guys, but you know, yeah, you know, if, if, like lessons can help, but also can't. But even the slightest amount of uh, suggestion or or questions can make you go can save you a lot of time and effort. Like, oh, what, yeah. like instead of trying to figure out yourself, which some people have to do, but just ask questions and you'll learn. I'm a little attention. bit more that I like. I do enjoy the process of figuring it out yourself, but yeah. for if you're starting off, I, I agree with you to ask the fucking questions. Cool. Don't don't wear yourself yeah. out trying to figure shit out. It's especially over something that's so simple that someone could just literally answer like that. Yeah, I have a There's topic no to talk it. about real quick. Yeah, go for it. Tires. Candos. God damn it. Molino. All day long. Always. Uh, Depending I, I on what do you're want doing, to try Bolinos. But I'm, here, but I, listen, I, game changer. Bolinos. Everybody that's on Kendas, they drive on the damn Kendas. And then a Kenda can kind of, for comparison for a Bolino is the Griva. The mm. Griva will be 30, 40% grippier. Side bite. Mm-hmm. Some forward. Mm-hmm. Depending on your alignment. But either way, you'll have more. And life. Dude, those damn things last so long. Um, Longer than a Kenda? Yes. I will mm. say. I promise you. Now, I promise to now. Lord maybe the new, Maybe the new Valinos Kendas. are probably the move now. E- even before. With the accessibility of Kendas beforehand. Right. I would definitely go Kenda over Valinos. But look, now, Valinos are probably the move. If you look at a Kenda compared to a Valino, even the height will just tell you what you got to know. You know what I mean? Like when, you go, when I entered on a Kenda, I would no grip. Valino. Mm-hmm. Grip, more, way more control of the car. Kenda's fine. It'll work for a fun event, whatever you want to do. But even like, so the Griva is like the comparison. Three hundred try wear, I think, tire, and then um, no, three sixty. Griva is three sixty, and then the zero eight C is three hundred. I run zero eight Cs and clutch triggers. That's all I run because I can make my car fast on them, and they last forever. I barely change tires or clutch triggers at the old track on Grivas, which my car wasn't that fast, but it was still competitive. With the 08Cs, it's like perfect for like five to 600 horsepower. No, four to 600 horsepower cars. Even some Zs run the Cs, and they work. BQ cars. And oh, like, dude, dude, I like, was hooking my Z I, up. It's with... more affordable for me to run the Cs and have it last so much longer. Yeah. And I've, I've run a lot of towing in my car and have PBM rear, so it has all the good stuff. So, like, <laughs> it's it, the 08Cs, if you have not tried 08Cs and you don't want to break everything, mm-hmm. do that. If you want to be a damn rocket ship, and I mean rocket ship. And you're breaking axles now. <laughs> Do not run the R's. Turn the R's so, uh, I'm The not... R's are literally insane. They're amazing. I've never broken a set of axles. See, I, I never play, have play, either. Oh, you broke stuff. I ran... you broke, what'd you break? You said you said you broke something. I broke a drive shaft once, but oh. I, but I was just making a joke because I just got the car back oh, okay, and okay, I just okay. turned it way up, so uh, I know it's gonna break something soon. Okay, but it's been it. three seasons in, never broken a set <laughs> okay. of axles or a diff, which got everyone it. is always like, "That's impossible." Right. And I'm like. I, you know, yeah, I know. Yeah. But it's on Kindle, so it doesn't have any grip. I've right. never broken an axle, a diff, or any of that. Dude, I ran 255 Accelerus. <sighs> on Don't my even Z. get me started on Accelerus. Sorry, I'm mean dick. Well, I'm not the <laughs> biggest fan of Accelerus either, but Dude, like, like they're grippy. So it's funny, my, my friend Paul with the LS R, RX7, he is kind of learning how to put grip in his car. I'm trying to teach him the right way, but they had Accelera had that damn sale. It was like a hundred bucks a tire. He bought like eight of them. Just whatever. It's a good deal. Sure. Yeah. He, he goes on drives. Oh my God, they're amazing in the wet. I'm like, go drive on the, drive on the dry. I guarantee, you know, maybe may four flap out. Four flap out. They last that long. You're going to be pissed. Yeah. And Taylor was testing his car that event. And I kind of introduced them. And they went and drove. And he, he did okay. And then after the last stop, he was like, fucking hate these tires. They suck. They're terrible. I'm like, I literally told you this. This is what I told you. Because they'll have to grip for like two laps. <sighs> Dude, Third lap in, gone. Thank you. Trash. No side bite. Nothing. Shit, Valinos grippy, all the way down. Yeah, I, 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 I trash on Accelerus. I don't. Look, I'm not yeah. the biggest the fan of them. On the 08 Cs and Rs, they had the same kind of sidewall, just different uh, tread wear. Yeah. The, the, Every the time I've used them, even on a Z, they don't last for shit. No. Yeah, sure. They f- like they feel a lot grippier and they feel a lot smoother than any like Kenda or anything yeah. like that. But, but like, like dude, I'm telling you, it's just dude, not like, worth it. The Valino, dude, 
And yes, they're a little bit more pricier, but like you will, I, I promise you, I will make a bet right now. You will last so much longer and have 30 times more grip or more, depending on what you're driving and how you set up your car. But like, again, like I'm competing with cars that are on GT regulars mm -hmm. and, you know, dittos, all the, you know, every pro comp tire and I'm on zero eight C's and it's moving. Yeah. <laughs> Not even on ours. I gapped Jonathan there on the bank somehow. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> he <laughs> fucked up or something, but I gapped him. He's on 295, and that was gone. I don't know. But, no, I just did that. But It's all about the last per dollar. No, but, like, no, sir, it, it, think about it, though. Zero, 08Rs are extremely grippy, and they're very expensive, and they don't last long at all. Mm. The Cs are affordable for what they are. They yeah, last yeah. forever with grip. Forever. Like, even on the bank at Flush Stickers, I was like... I'm not out of tire yet. Like, what is going on? That's crazy. And I have but a lot of wheel speed, too. Get? See, that's lot. how I felt about Kimba's. I did, I did the two-day Clarksville event. Yeah. And I was like, I just, you know, you get to you get to drink a beer and sure. hang out with your buddies or whatever. And I was like, came back, turned around. And I was like, am I out of tire? And my buddy looked oh, at me shit. like I was nuts. I my tires you know? And yet. I was like, what do you mean? And I was, I have to be out of tire. This so, is like lap 20. No way. I and put, like, it still had tire on. And I was like, still like half tread and yeah. shit. They're like, I put a... For, no, I put a probably 85% tire on for my top 64 battle at Clark Shakers this past round. Did all of practice Sunday morning and my um, top 32 battle the same set of tires. And I still have about half tread left, or maybe a little above on the same set of tires at a lot of wheel speed at 600 horsepower. Yeah, and a lot of toe in. That's crazy. Hell yeah. Um, but. Thank you for no coming problem. on, man. Thank you guys. Uh, Come it's on way been out a here. great one. Yes, yeah, all the way to Florida. If you guys want to see more of this, like the video. That's the best way to know that you like it. The best way for us to even be able to tell. So um, if you haven't, if you scroll down a little bit, see the like button's not clicked, go ahead and press it real quick. And uh, you go down a little bit lower, if that subscribe button is not clicked, you definitely want to click that one because about 50% of you guys still are not subscribed that are watching these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking so, ninjas. <laughs> Hit the button. Yeah, what he said. And then go buy merch. Yeah. Can so uh, if you do like these travel podcasts, what he said, go buy the damn merch so we can even afford to keep yeah, doing this. This shit is expensive. Pricey. <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, where can they find you at? Uh, Instagram, Matt Shulman with four N's. And then YouTube is my name, Matt Shulman. And then... My name's everywhere, everywhere else as well. Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. So all the same at. Just type it in. And we'll put it in the description and everything too. So, But that's it for this one, guys. I sure do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. See you later.